call the roll? Yes. Jonathan Bruns. D. Berrigan. Here. Gloria Collins. Ramon Martinez. Andrew Ditlevson. Yes. <laughs> Freddie Sidbury. Here. Sylvia Alvarez. Here. BJ Fatum. Here. Lenka Wright. Lenka. Present. Thank you. And Nadina. Present. And Fred Buzo. Here. Thank you. We have a quorum. Great. Oh, so the clerk will now play a brief video detailing how members of the public may access interpretive services. Hola y bienvenidos a esta reunión. Para acceder a la función de interpretación, haga clic en el icono del globo en la parte inferior de la ventana de Zoom y selecciona el idioma que desea. Para escuchar claramente el audio de interpretación, le recomendamos que también seleccione la opción para silenciar el audio original, que es la opción más baja en el menú después de hacer clic en el icono del globo. Xin chào và cảm ơn quý vị đã tham dự buổi họp ngày hôm nay. Để truy cập vào phần thông dịch của ứng dụng Zoom, xin nhấn vào biểu tượng hình quả địa cầu ở phía dưới của màn hình và chọn ngôn ngữ theo ý muốn của quý vị. Để nghe rõ lời phiên dịch, chúng tôi khuyến khích quý vị chọn chức năng tắt âm thanh góc nằm ở phía cuối trong phần tùy chọn của biểu tượng quả địa cầu. Thank you. Uh, I don't see any um, orders of the day unless uh, someone has something um, at this point. No? We really only have the one item, so there's not much to change. Okay, good. So um, so then let, let's uh, move on. We also do not have a public record. So uh, we'll move on. We do not have a uh, consent calendar or reports and information. So we go straight to the public hearing. And um, like uh, many of the commissioners have, <laughs> excluding myself, uh, they're gonna hold, a, we're gonna pull the public hearing on the uh, plans that we have before us. And uh, just want to remind folks um, that we have three plans, three maps, I should say, before us at this point in time and uh, they are attached to the agenda. Uh, redistricting partners, uh, I will give you the floor. Uh, but before I do that, I just wanted to make sure that, uh, to your knowledge, the maps that are attached to the agenda are the correct maps and, and, that, um, and that you have those available uh, for, for folks to view uh, in case we need you to bring those up. I do, I have them ready. The maps that are attached to the agenda are the ones I believe that we approved last site last time on Thursday. And I apologize. I I was thinking this was at seven, and it of course is at six. So I'm ready, um, and can pull up the binders that we um, um, for each of the plans, and we can go through them um, however you'd like to go. Yeah, I would I would just suggest that we we go through. Um each one uh, just in the order that they're on the uh, on the agenda. Um, I'm not sure if anyone else would have any other preference at this point. No? No preference. Okay, great. Okay, so would we like to start with the D4 map? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner Wright. 
Thank you, Chair. I just thought it would be helpful if Chris might be able to give a little description about the origin of the map, so that way the public is aware where these maps came from originally. Sure. Um, so let me just start with, I'll just start with the overview map um, of D4. So this is um, plan D4. This came out of the C3 series. Um, I think we've had D, D2, D3, and D4. And so this is a map that um, we've come to each, at the end of each um, evening to, um, to move, move lines within the, between the districts based on community, of in, community input and from commission driven um, discussions. This is the overview map where you can, you can just basically see the, um, the freeways and the major streets. Um, the next page um, is the current lines overlaid um, with the, the proposed divisional, dis uh, the district um, descriptions in black. Um, and so I think I'll just go through them kind of from uh, current lines to current to, to this draft. You can see that um, districts one, district one doesn't change very much at all. Um, district two, you can see, has picked up part of the Coyote Valley area that was in district eight. District three in this configuration has lost population um, at the southern at its southern border to district six and seven for population equality because we remember as we remember d3 and d4 um, both were the two most overpopulated districts in their current configurations so d4 also lost population um, or district four excuse me um, you can see though that as we did last time um, penitentia creek and barry s are all whole within district four District five has um, pretty much picked up part of um, the north, the southern portion of district four, but it's picked up from district eight, the Ocala neighborhood. Um, district six is, is in a similar configuration, but it has um, district nine has moved a little bit north to incorporate, um, or sorry, district six has moved a little bit south to incorporate northern part of district nine. It has also moved out and in the last change taken in um, um, mass, um, the Mastic neighborhood. I can't remember its full name, I'm sorry. Uh, Goodyear, Goodyear Mastic. Mastic. Thank you. Um, district seven as well has picked up a little bit of district three because again, district three was overpopulated. District eight um, is, is very um, close to its current lines but has um, picked up a little bit of District 7. Nine has picked up the Communications Hill portion. Um, no, no, that's in 10, I'm sorry. Communications Hill is in 10. And in nine, you see it's picked up a little bit of six for population equality. Um, you can see this is the um, neighborhood overlays. We do split some neighborhoods, but we've been very, um, I think very good at, um, focusing in on neighborhood splits and trying to unify them in one district or another. We spent a lot of time um, last time on Thursday focusing, focusing in on um, the district six, seven, nine um, areas. And also, again, unifying Penitentia Creek um, neighborhood into district four. The next plan, um, is it, do you wanna do unity next or the community 3.0. Um, what, what, what do you think makes more sense from your perspective? I, mean, I have Unity up next, so how about I just jump there? Let's do that. Um, I think Unity 3 or Unity plan from 1027, um, it has the most changes um, from the current lines. Um, and, and I think you can see that best when we do the overlay um, of the current lines. Um, you can see that District 1 has now moved north um, into District 6 and taken the northwest port portion of San Jose. District 6, I'm, I'm just going to go kind of across. District 6 um, has grown into kind of the downtown area. It um, doesn't take in the airport. Wait, no, it does take in the airport. 
um, and it loops down with District 3 coming into it um, over the freeway. It also has this long arm down into 9 um, to allow 9 to come up and take like the Willow Glen area in. Um, so that's like a, a very different kind of ar like architecture for the west side of San Jose. Um, you can also see that District 10 has really moved, I guess, south into District, um, what is this? This is, why is that not numbered? That should be District. I believe that's two. That should be two. Wow. Okay. So I, I don't know. This is, um, I apologize for that error in this map. But um, District 10 and 2 have really kind of split territory with District 10 taking um, Coyote and like the south southwestern portion and, and, and District 2 taking um, like the D4 map, taking Coyote, the Coyote area, Coyote Valley area from District 8, but also having like kind of three tendrils into District, current District 9. Um, into current district 10 and well and and somewhat this just different configuration um, and then I think you can see the biggest one of the biggest changes is district three it was overpopulated so it did have to lose territory but in the unity map um, configuration it um, loses a lot of downtown um, it loses the airport it grows into district four because district four of course has to has to shrink um and ha i guess its east side is is very similar to its current lines district four because it had to shrink has lost part of its um western border but in just in the unity plan um penitentiary creek is whole with Berryessa. um district five is in a similar construction to its current lines you can see it picks up a little bit of four and um and also the Ocala neighborhood. And District 7 is almost exactly the same as it is now, currently. And District 8 is very similar. It just lost has lost um, Cody Valley um, and Ocala. Um, so you can, this is the neighborhood overlay. I think if we really want to get into neighborhood splits, we should um, go into Maptitude and we can look at different borders. Um, so I think that, and we can drill down into the street levels. Um, and then finally, we have the community map, which in a lot of ways is is similar to D4. Um, I'll try to point out some of the differences. Um, you can see that um, Penitentia Creek is whole, but they've, they've taken it and they've made it, made the Penitentia um, border, the, the floor of District 4. And move District Three a little bit more into um, into District Four. District One and and One is basically the same. I think it's identical to District Four. District Six. The biggest difference is they've taken in this um, peninsula down along the freeway, um, and and also this line along the bottom is is pretty similar to District Four as well. But again, there is slight differences in this area of the map. Um, District 10 in there in the unity map um, has moved in and taken into Communications Hill, um, like D4. Um, they do a similar split in Coyote and in between into two from eight. Um, District five, the, the reason for this difference is they incorporate both the, free, the airport and the Ocala neighborhood, I believe. This is the neighborhood portion or the airport portion into District five. Um, Those are the major sh differences between um, between the com community plan and the um, D4 map. But I think if we want to get into um, more details, we can um, we can use Maptitude to get into the specifics. I don't know if you and the one thing I did not do in any of this, and I apologize, was I didn't get into the data tables. So let me. Let me do that. So this is the D4 plan. Um, you can see that it's, um, wow, well, it should not be at 10.4%, but it looks like one of the things that we may have to look at 
is the swap um, to to make Penitentia Creek hole in D4 may have brought us over deviation. Um, so we need to look at that if we want to go forward with D4. Um, you can see that the Asian CVAP is at the minimum majority minority district is wait, I, I totally I'm sorry. Um, I need to slow down. So total deviation of district of D, D4 is fine. 6.1% plus 2.4%. So it's at 8.5% total deviation. So we're okay. Um, I apologize for that. Um, skipping a heartbeat like I did when I said it, I'm sorry. Um, I think, again, looking at the major the majority minority seats, we have District 4, of course, at 56.9, and District 8 at 54.9. Um, we also have an influence district in District 7 at 47% Latino or uh, Asian. And then we have the Latino district at 46, the influence district at 46.7 is District 5. You'll see in all of these plans that those same districts have influence and majority minority districts just the, the percentages are slightly different. Um, in the unity plan, you see a 56.6% um, district four, a 54.4% district eight, those are the majority minorities. Their district seven influence district is slightly higher, it's at 48.1. And again, their influence district in district five for the Latinos is also slightly higher at 48.2. Um, the overall deviation of this plan um, is 8.7%, so very close to the D4, 8.5. Um, and then finally, the community plan has a total deviation of 9.6 plus 3.2 is 9.2. Um, I'm just want to do the math in front of you so you guys can see. Um, the API Influent majority minority districts are again in district four with 56.5% um, and 54.2%. Um, the influence district is less than um, the unity plan around the same as the D4 plan at 46.4%. And then um, their Latino CVAP is right in between the unity map and the D4 map at 47.9% in district five. So that's, that rounds out the population deviations and the majority minority and influence districts created in each of the plans. Um, and I give it back to the chair. All right. Thank you, uh, Chris. Do, does anyone have any, any clarifying questions before we move forward? I. I, I had uh, I had one at least, Chris, if okay. I could. Of course. On, on the community map, if you could if you could bring that up again, I I just wanted to make sure we were looking at the right map because I I thought I remember a few changes to that map. So this was one that was time. that was sent back to us. Um, like I had posted the wrong version of it. Um, and so I reran it, um, directly from districtor. Um, I don't know if there'd been changes on the night of, or, or, or what have you, but, um, this was the, the plan, um, directly from their districtor site. Um, so, and, and they emailed us with that number and saying, this is our, the final 3.0, um, map. Okay. Okay, only because I'm, I'm I'm looking at the map that was attached to the agenda, and it's actually a little different for the community map. So, um, with that said, you know we, we aren't going to be voting on any final, you know, making any final decisions tonight. So, uh, but I I think the the community map that's attached to the agenda is a little different. Just want to make sure that we're talking about the the same one. But but if you're saying that this is the latest information you have, the one that you have on your um, screen right now, then um, then that's the one that we should probably discuss. I, mean, I just wanted to, yeah, yeah clarify yeah. that one. 
Tony, if I don't know if um, if you want to correct me, uh, oh, I just clicked a lot of talk on Cheryl, but I know that she's so, requested to be able yeah, to I present an update. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I know we had some uh, something wasn't quite right on the weekend, so we put a temporary one up, and then I know we sent you the the map number for ours. I think it was seven five two three four, and um, so I think. Hopefully that's the one you pulled, Chris. I think seven five two three four. Let me make sure. I'm sorry. That's all right. It's so many maps. It's in, it's bizarre. <laughs> it's like an endless number of maps. Yeah. And, I, and wait a minute. Let me see something. Yeah. Seven five two three four. Okay. I you're right, Chair, and and I apologize. Um, I did pull the wrong binder. Oh, we still um, have the wrong one again. Is this is this look right, Cheryl? Oh, it's so hard to tell from that. Uh, uh, well, yeah, that, that one looks more consistent with what was attached to the agenda. Okay. Yeah. The, this is Commissioner Merrigan. Yes, that looks correct when we added um, the neighborhoods at the sound, excuse me, south end of District 3 into District right. 6. So that looks correct. Right. Um, that, that's what makes it easy to tell the difference, actually, this little, yeah, yeah right there. I really, I really apologize. I. I pulled up the old old map when I started, so that's on me. Thank you, Cheryl, for all of your work and. Um, oh, thanks. I'll, I'll double check the website. We're done and make sure we get the right thing up there after the meeting. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Wright. Chris, I have a question for you as our resident uh, redistricting expert. You know, our overarching purpose as a commission is to develop and propose city council district maps that ensure fair representation of San Jose's communities in their local government. So when we as a commission are considering these three different maps, what should we be looking for in terms of any signs that there may be purposeful dilution of uh, of any group of their vote. You know, are there any telltale signs or things that we should be looking for? Because we're getting now close to the wire on recommending a map or more than one map to the city council. I, I, I think I would be guided by the the amount of community in, of community of interest testimony that's been given. Um, you've been you've received a lot in the, over the last three or four weeks um and i think listening to that that input um is the best way to ensure that communities of interests are kept whole um and i think being guided as well by um, some of the numbers um that we go over but i think the biggest thing is list, thinking back and trying to remember all of the input you've received from the public um, and then also thinking through your knowledge base of, of the city of San Jose, you've all lived and worked and in, um, in the city, and you've been appointed um, by you've been appointed to basically be a representative as, of your district. So thinking through the community of interest testimony, your knowledge base, the district that you're representing, um, I think that's the balancing act that you have to go through um, to make the best recommendations, I guess, on changing maps and then recommending maps to the city council. Um, that's what I would, I think, be, be focused on um, as you as you go forward. Right. Thank you, Chris, for that, because in, for the district that I'm representing, District 10, I get a little concerned when I see very different uh, lines being drawn in the unity map, uh, which from the testimony we've received from those who are uh, current residents of District 10, as well as even from nearby districts who have concerns about some of the changes in the lines being drawn, that I am trying to pay very close attention of keeping these communities of interest together. Uh, so thank you for your comments tonight, Chris. Commissioner Sidbury. Just let me know if you want to, me to bring up a map. Um, 
Commissioner Sidbury. Okay, uh, we'll move on to uh, Commissioner uh, uh, Ditlevson. Thank you. So, Chris, I think I asked this question last week just because I, I like to make sure that I'm understanding all the data because we do move through it a little bit quickly. So across the three maps that we have now whittled it down to, my understanding is that the majority minority districts are effectively the same with some very minor percentage differences amongst the three maps, as well as the influence districts are identical across the three maps, again, with some minor fluctuation in percentages. Is that correct? Yeah. The, the influence districts and the majority minority districts are the same numbers. Um, in all three plans. And as you pointed out, there is a slight variation in the um, Asian CVAP numbers and the Latino CVAP number in District 5, but they are all very similar. And then one other question I had is, so the in the deviations, I have eight and a half on D4, what I refer to as kind of the commission map, because the genesis of that was us instructing you to create a minimal change map from the current boundaries, which then created the C3 series. And then from there, we made changes that went into the D with each commissioner kind of moving lines based on the COI testimony and our own knowledge of the districts and those iterations built. So I'm gonna to refer to it as the commission's map because it's kind of hard when you have other maps with names on them and then D4 confuses me at least. So commission's map, I have an eight and a half percent deviation Unity map, I have an 8.7% deviation, and the community map is a 9.2% deviation. Is, is that correct? Yeah, the, the unity map is actually 8.8. 8.8. Okay. And yeah, and the community map is um, sorry, this is the this is the, the other community map, which I think they've they've changed their deviation. So I apologize again. It is at 7.9. Um, 7.9. Yeah. Okay. With so 7.9 7 on the community map, eight and a half on the commissioned map and 8.8 .8 on the unity map. Exactly. Okay. All right, that's all I need for right now. Thank you. Commissioner Sidbury, did you? Uh want to uh, comment on something or ask, I have a question. Well, um, I'm having problems with my system. It continues to stay on the live transaction, the translation. So I'm hoping that you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, maybe I have to log back out, I'm sorry, and, and come back in because I'm getting Chris from English. Chris. And, and some English from you, but then it goes back to the live translation and I guess that's Vietnamese. So uh, if you can give me Hi, a moment, is, but- this is, um, Wait, wait, hold on, this is- Because I've been trying to read the translation as we go along and it's very, very difficult doing it that way. So if you don't mind, give me an opportunity to log out and log back in. Okay. Okay. I hope that works. I can talk him through it if he comes back on and he's, he, it sounds like he's I on can the, barely hear you. Over I understand the, it. It sounds like you're on the because every, audio channel. I'm going to email Freddie. Okay. Does anyone else have any uh, comments or questions on the uh, initial overview uh, that was provided by Chris? No. Um, so I have a question for the um, city attorney. Um, you know, because because I, I we've heard that uh, some members of the community and talk about um, you know voter suppression and and. Um, and purposeful actions that may result in inequities. And, but the acts of, uh, of, of redistricting don't necessarily have to be purposeful, correct? In, in order for them to be inequitable. 
Am I right? That's correct. You don't have to just, you don't have to show a discriminatory discriminatory intent or purpose in order to prove a Voting Rights Act violation. Okay. And then another question I have is, um, can can an entire city map be invalidated because of the effects that the redistricting has on one particular council district? That's a good question. Uh, it's something I'm going to have to look into, but um, look into further. So I can't provide you a direct answer. I will say though that once the map is approved, then uh, and anybody bringing a plan, um, an action is going to have to prove how the violation affects them. Um, uh, but I can look further to see the scope by which that individual plaintiff or group can make a claim against the entire map, and and return with an information with a return with an answer next week. Okay. Meeting. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I'd, I'd appreciate that. Um, and, and I can, I can just say that, look, the, the reason I'm, I'm asking these questions is because, and I know I'm coming in into this late in the game, but just to be real honest with you, I, I am, I am very concerned with what's going on on the Southern end of district three. Um, you have four, possibly five, if you count Tamian as a separate neighborhood, heavily Latino districts that are not only being taken out of District 3, they're being split and put into three other districts. So uh, you have two neighborhoods going into District 6, potentially. You have one staying in three, and then you have two going into District 7. And I, I'm concerned about that, that, that you have uh, this sort of group of neighborhoods that are heavily Latino, that would um, that who's you know political power uh, potentially could be you know diluted by moving them into three separate districts. And so uh, it, I don't have a solution for that. I know that they're talking about a lot of numbers here, um, and uh, looking at how the populations were being moved back and forth the last time. Um, yeah, I, you know I began to <laughs> become aware of how difficult this is. And uh, but I just wanted to raise that as a concern that that I have, um, and that uh, um, and that these these neighborhoods having having worked in these neighborhoods before, um, I, I know that there like I said last time there's a lot of synergy between these these neighborhoods, and they're all contiguous, and they have a lot of history, and so uh, I just want to make sure that moving forward we we keep that in mind. Um, as we, you know, continue to, to uh, develop the maps. Uh, Commissioner Berrigan. Thank you, Chair Puzo. Um, I do wanna echo your comments on, in regards to the Southern end of District 3 in regards to Spartan Keys uh, Goodyear Mastic, Tamian, and you know that uh, the Washington, Guadalupe, Washington neighborhoods. Uh, we did advocate originally to try to keep these neighborhoods in District Three. However, with Goodyear Mastic, they are that uh, District Three, District Seven split. So it would be ideal to keep them either all in District Seven, or somehow keep them as is with the D three. D7 split as they currently are. Um, last week, we also mentioned, you know, we could put uh, Tamian, I believe it was Goodyear Mastic into District 6 to, to try to, you know, keep those neighborhoods that are very, very tightly knit um, somehow together, although we are splitting them apart. So it's very complex, as we all know. Um, I did uh, get to see some feedback through emails from Spartan Keys. Uh, so they have expressed interest to stay, stay and remain in District 3, which is going to be complex in itself because that means for our D4 map, when we start doing edits, we may have to go into the southern bound, I'm sorry, the northern boundaries of District 3 which where we kind of sprawled into District 4 to bring those boundaries further south out of District 4 
so we can perhaps adjust the the drawing of the of the boundaries further south to see if we could reclaim Spartan Keys and any other neighborhood in that section. That's all I have right now. Oh, Commissioner uh, Fadum. Thank you. Um, so Commissioner Buzo, you uh, brought up a point also that I would like to ask the city attorney. We received one of the letters of the public was talking about um, voter disenfranchisement with regard to what we read district. And if a particular council member is all of a sudden out of that district, I mean, when we read it, but yet we're not supposed to redistrict with uh, the political alignment. So what happens? I mean, it, it may, I don't know if it's going to, and hopefully it doesn't, but what happens if the way we do have to somehow realign the districts, um, one of the council members are switched to a different district? So for the purposes of uh, the incumbent, if they're redistricted out of their district, it does not create a vacancy. The charter contemplates contemplates that that member will be able to continue to represent that district for which they were elected until the end of their term. When they run for re-election, however, they're going to need to establish residency in the district that they want to run in. So either they have to run for re-election in their new district or they have to move. But that automatically doesn't create a voter disenfranchisement, right? No, because the incumbent will be able to maintain their seat until the end of their term. Got it. Thank you. Commissioner Berrigan, did you have another comment or is that an old hand? Sorry, old hand. Pretty much. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no problem. Commissioner Sidbury, can you hear us now? Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay, so everything's everything's working fine. Everything is right now. Yes. Sorry, okay. everyone. That's okay. Very sorry about that. Yes, you can continue, um, Mr. Brizzo. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, at this point, so would would folks want to go? In into more detail, map by map at this point. And, you know, commissioners. Okay. Mayor Buzo, are you asking if you would like us to start uh, looking at the maps and redrawing lines? Is that what? Oh, the uh, live map map making. Is that what you're asking, or something else? Well, it, it, I guess yeah, related to that. But would you want to go map by map? Is what I'm saying, rather than just let, let's just let's just do that then at this point. Um, I mean, Chris, if you could pull up the the draft map D four. And uh, Commissioner uh, DeLevison, I, I, I totally get it. The D4 thing, I kept thinking about District 4 every time I saw that and read it and heard it. And so um, if you want to, um, for purposes of the next meeting, um, I think you were referring to it as a commission's map, draft map. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think that would make things a little easier to understand as well. I support that change. This is the D4 map um, where we left it what left off on Thursday um, and is the PDF. Same as the PDF version you have. Um, I don't know how we want to start. Well, uh, can you can you zoom in to that the area that I was referencing in terms of like the southern end of District Three? Sure. So you can see that it uses the six eighty two eighty freeway as much of the um, border between three and seven, and then drops to Willow Street 
to include Guadalupe, Washington into District 3. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Gardner was formerly in District 3 as well. Is that that's right? Yeah, let me put on the current lines. So one of the one of the well, it was split. Oh, it was split kind of one third, mm. two thirds, roughly. Um, yeah. The to D six and D three, um, and you can see that the line, I think, goes down like this, and then it had um, part of Spartan Keys and part of. Um, well, I, I think I always call name this area wrong so it split this neighborhood here um in between district um seven and three and chris just a quick comment is that gardener line that follows the railroad track that runs through there because that's my house is right there like two blocks so okay mm -hmm. so yeah so it followed the railroad line and then came came up like this and then out and along so the, the the western border hasn't really shifted. Mm -hmm. but you can see that this area. Um, well, I guess District Three is technically expanded slightly, right into Deerdon a little bit, and then into um, past Delmas Park on this end, and has shrunk, um, moving the these this portion of the map into District Seven. And I know you did this last time, and I know Commissioner Berrigan has asked this probably like several times, but uh, you know what happens if you put Good Goodyear Mastic back in D three? Like, how how much is the, does it change yeah, there? Well, the, it doesn't severely do anything. It probably moves it to like point maybe six percent over. Mm. Um, I think the hard part is that that you can't keep district three whole because it's the one that's D three and D four are the ones that have both grown. Yeah. Right. And almost all the other districts have not, well, I should say have not kept pace with the growth of three and four. Yeah. No, I, I know. I, I just, it, it, it you know, I, no, I, I'm here to show options. So I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm agnostic on making, <laughs> I don't, um, here, let me just pull up the pending changes. Okay. And so you guys can see this. Um, so you can see that, I mean, I haven't done the whole movement, um, but it's at, this was causing District 3 to be over by 8%, mm. um, and District 7 to be under by over 6 Okay. So I mean, you yeah. you can always make this change, but it also then would require, you know, a shift. I mean, the easiest shift would be having District Seven go north into District Three and pick up different neighborhoods mm -hmm. as a swap. But you can also do a rotation where District Three comes in this way, District Seven pulls from the east, and you do a rotation around. But this this change would make all district thing almost over by eight nine percent, and district six would be under by seven percent. Got it. Yeah, it's a pretty dense dense area there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Commissioner Berrigan. Chris, could we expand, or I'm sorry, explore, uh, trying to reclaim Spartan Keys, Virginia and Martha back into District 3? So pretty much that natural pink line boundary from west of Goodyear Mastic all the way down to, I think, believe it might be center. That is center, yeah. So this is going to make seven would make three even more overpopulated than if we just did Goodyear Mastic. Now, what if we went 
uh, to the northern boundary where it goes into District 4 to try and trim some of those uh, boundaries to bring the District 3 boundary or, you know, to trim it south. That wouldn't work because District 4 is overpopulated by 6%. Okay. I mean, you, you would... You would just make the upper bounds higher. I, I mean, right? Like if you did this, let's say you took two points out of three and moved mm -hmm. it into four, then you'd have two eights, two eight, over eight percent populated districts. So then you just make, have to basically make sure your floor was above was above negative two percent. So you'd have to grow six and two into the one point nine region. And what if we went into the eastern boundary near Las Palumas and perhaps um, with the guidance of the District 5 Commissioner, could we possibly place that into District 5 if they are not overpopulated? Yeah, they're not. They're right at, they're almost ideal. So you could, you could definitely do a swap here, this, that. I mean, I don't know if, if it's going to be work for exactly, but we could look at how much of Las Plumas you can find to five. If that was of interest. So Las Plumas has a natural boundary of King North King Road. Um, we could try to unify that up to King Road. I'm trying to see zoom in, and I can't really. You tell. want me to make this swap? I can easily reverse it. Um, well, here, why don't we make this swap, and then let's go look. So, yeah, to like to this here to King. So King down to McKee and north to Mawberry. Okay. Las Plumas has a, a two sections. So you have an industrial section to the west and a residential a section to the east. Right, so this is the residential here? Correct. Got it. So I think you're gonna have to, you might have to take in, well, let's see. Let's make four at six and five, 6.7. And the high, the low mark is 2.45. So you'd be slightly over 10. You'd be at 10.18. So you'd need to take a little bit more. You need to get five a little like under um, six point five. So like, you said hey, this is not supposed to be there. No. So I think you'd want to, I mean, is there a, would you want to take it all the way to the 101 or no? Can we zoom in on that? I want to see if we took Las Blumas to the 101, that's also industrial, but it's also mixed with Ann Darling neighborhood. Uh, and that's a tricky area too, because that Ann Darling neighborhood is kind of it's a kind of like a cove like it, it's there's really no outlets to that neighborhood other than the ins and outs of McKee. Got some McKees here. Yeah, so that that's its own kind of closed off neighborhood. It has the creek right there, and then of course the freeway. Um, right in back of Ann Darling, we have apartments. 
next industrial. If you you would feel like that uh, area from, let's see, what is that street? We have Silver Creek. That could be a natural boundary because that's pretty much where that neighborhood is cut off by the creek there. It's all, uh, so make sure to include this to McKee. Correct. Like, okay. That's the elementary school right above there next to the freeway. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not guiding you here. We actually need to, um, we need to take less. Less. Populated by um, more than 6%. So we need to get to, to 6 point. Here, sorry, let me do this again. We need to take a little bit less because we, we're adding too much, right? Because like it should be at, 6.5 and with this addition it's at 6.7 or 6.7 okay yeah i don't uh i don't know like that would be non contiguous you'd have some islands in here but um, we, yeah. i don't know which side makes mo the most sense so this the section just north of Overfelt Gardens, Independence High School in Jackson, that rectangle area, that's the school. Okay. Is that currently District 5? Yeah, this is District 5 here. So the red would be adding. So, like, if you wanted to take in this portion, that would move five to six point three point nine percent over, which would be fine. And district three would be come down to six point four percent, so you would be under um, the deviation. So if we if we take that, um, those are also some resident like uh, residential, but it's also newer apartments in the square that's just north of the red, all the way up to Mawberry and east of King Road that area there so Sorry, that would be a total deviation of 9.8% so you'd be you'd be fine that would be more ideal uh, for that section to be together rather than going into Ann Darling and trying to divide that neighborhood. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Sure. So that would be a, um, a change out from to add Spartan Keys into. Oh, that's. Sorry, this. Let me make that. Let me edit. I didn't, that this is supposed to be in three. I'm sorry. Okay. And let's let's look back now. Let's look at the total deviations and make sure we don't have anything. Um, that's. You can see there's that's an eight person difference. So it's very industrial. Mm -hmm. um, we're unpopulated. Um, it's industrial. So that we have. So it looks like in these these edits, District Seven is still under these shifts. So because we moved it in, District Seven needs to gain population. So what if we placed Goodyear Mastic back into District Seven? Turn it down so I can talk now. And I'm telling you. Wait. Oh, into yeah, into seven. Pardon the interruption, Chris. I was going to say, before you do other movement or however you want to handle it, I want to see what the demographics 
what happens to the CVAP demographics with the changes, you know, that have been suggested so far? Sure. I'll make this swap and then we can do, we'll do exactly that. That is that, okay? is that okay? Or do you want yeah. to know? Okay. So this would make it, um, you'd be at 2.8483 um, under for seven and six would be, Six would then, I mean, you're, so doing this, you now six has to grow, right? Because you just put in seven. Um, so six is now underpopulated by 7%. Um, and, and really the only place it can grow is into district three. Um, you could take some from down in district nine but then you'd have nine underpopulated so really what we've done here is we've packed we've overpopulated three four and five um and if you want to see the current um so district um district five so i guess we were, we're looking at um the major changes were in district five got a 38% API CVAP, 2.4% African-American and a 45.75 um, Latino CVAP. This is still um, much lower than the unity number of 48.2. Um, and I think one of the, one of the reasons is that district five in um, the unity unity map um, is underpopulated by 3.6%. So, and you have it at the high water of the whole plan at 6.69%. So if, yeah, so I, I think that's one of the issues with in this configuration um, and the reason it doesn't line up as well as the unity plan on the Latino CVAP numbers. And currently we have the Gardner neighborhood entirely in District 6. Correct. Commissioner from District 6, do you have any recommendations to add to District 6? Um, well, I mean, the problem, the problem is, is that number we can't grow into one we can't grow into nine because of population issues right now we can't grow into seven so you can only grow into three and three we expanded actually into the deer dawn area for what i think are legitimate purposes given the contemplated development in that area um and what i understand the general plan to be for that area and its connection to downtown um so my, there was a lot of movement here, but the original thought I had thinking about the comments that the chair made originally was, okay, how do we not split them up into three? Um, and originally we had Goodyear Mastic in six, which is also what the unity map and the community map had, I believe, or the unity map did at one point, I'm not sure if it still does, but um, would be to simply put the Guadalupe Washington area into six so the Gardner Guadalupe Washington and the Goodyear Mastic all remain united within one district. Because six, as we originally had it in the commission's map is still underpopulated by I think two and a half percent or thereabouts so we could certainly absorb the density in Guadalupe Washington um, and not alter the metrics in a negative way in terms of deviation um so but outside of that the only way to balance this would be to take part of three and put it into six and we had to be very sensitive with that because we've had a lot of testimony about folks who live in the downtown area that have no relationship to district six and there is a natural boundary there with the railroad tracks so that would be my only real suggestion and i understand that may not be ideal because there's some change but it does keep them together 
um, as a single community of interest in one district. Uh, Commissioner uh, did Levson, uh, you you were kind of breaking up, but you, when you talked about Deardon and like uh, why originally that went to why why the commission had placed it in District uh, Three. Yeah, um, let me t uh, I'll repeat myself. So that move, uh, it's a modest amount of population, obviously, because oh, that okay. is all commercial. So it was like seven hundred and fifty people. And there was testimony that we received, both in writing and orally, that there is a synergy between downtown West, which is the Deardon Station area, and downtown, obviously. I mean, there's a demarcation with 87, but the idea and the general plan, my understanding, um, is that there's a, good, there's a pedestrian flow that's going to be desired from Deardon into downtown. Right, it's a feeder area into downtown through the Google Village, through the other developments that are going on even north of near Coleman. And so there's a certain, not to mention the fact that there is BART coming through, allegedly, and um, that it would may be easier and people will share interest in those events if that section where BART is ultimately going to end up, for example, shares the same council member as downtown. Um, where the train is supposed to come all the way through down Santa Clara Street. Um, not to mention the fact that there's business districts there. I mean, so that is that is really what was the impetus for moving that line basically into Deardon Station. Um, and so okay. that was something I suggested and I asked for feedback from Commissioner Berrigan and she agreed. And so we made that change. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Martinez. I'm just waiting on looking at the demographics that that and Darling versus the the change up around Las Plumas makes for for the district. Yeah, so I have a sense that and Darling is extremely Latino. And uh, I have a feeling up higher into Las Plumas is probably not, but I don't know the numbers. That's why I'm asking. Yes. Will you give me some information. So the changes into District Five that we we made, it actually dropped the Latino CVAP to forty five point seven five in the original D four where we started. District Five had a Latino CVAP of forty six point seven, so it's moved it down a point. Um, District three, which we also made changes to, its current Latino CVAP is 34.2. Um, it has increased that by almost a point. The when we started, it was at 33.3% Latino CVAP. Um what, what, and if you would, um, would you also tell me the, how it looks for African American and for Asian? Sure. Um, the District 5 currently at 2.24 African American. It was at 2.6% um, when we started. Then District 3 is at 4.79% African American now. And when we started, it was at um 5.1%. And then for the for the API um district 3 it's currently at 24%. It started at let's see Asian 27%. Um and district 5 is currently at 38 um percent and the Asian CVAP where we started was at 36.9. Thank you. Sure. Commissioner Sidbury, I, I know you had your hand up earlier. And I, um, did you have a comment or question? Well, no, I wanted to go back to um, Commissioner Martinez. That's how I wanted to know the breakdown of the ethnicity of those districts that we're moving around. Um, 
I thought last week we did have Golden Mystic in the District 7, but now here we, we're looking at, a, if I'm not mistaken, Chris, um, I think you said we were at uh, for District 7. Um, where are we? Was it uh, 7%? A little over 7%? No, I'm sorry, it's 2.83 now. But uh, from last week, we're at 1.47. Isn't that right? So, we, I mean, we've changed this this area a lot, right? So, yeah. yeah. Um, Goodyear Massig is now in seven. Um, the Spartan Keys area is now in three. Um, and we moved Las Pumas into three as well. Um, so, you've changed. Well, and it, I'm sorry. And then just in District 5, Las Plumas was always there, but we've moved part of Las Plumas over into District 5 um, along King Street. Those are the major shifts so far. Um, and I think what this change seems to try, be trying to do is kind of make three what it was before, a little bit before and unify some, some um, neighborhoods, but by doing it, it's a, it's very, it's overpopulated four, five, three, four, and five um, to a great extent. And also um, district five has actually had a reduction in Latino CVAP um, with the inclusion of part of Las Plumas. Okay. Being that those districts are overpopulated would it be a possibility to look at District 3 one more time? Sure. And in doing so, the Guadalupe, Washington area, the Virginia, or uh, I'm trying to read it, Martin area, Moth area, it is, it's, boy, it is really tough. It's really tough. Well, I think one thing that um, Commissioner did, that lives in brought up is that you could you could unify Goodyear Mastic and Guadalupe Washington with Gardner Full in District 6. Uh-huh. Um, I think you would to, to do that I think District 7 would have to go would have to gain population you'd have no. to really undo what we've done. <laughs> um, yeah. And, I don't want us to do that. <laughs> but like that's for sure. I mean, it, the the, the well, fundamental issue with this map, as it is, is three, four, and five are way are overpopulated, and everything else is under. So, yeah. three, four, and five is going to have to give up territory to the other districts to balance this plan more, or you're going to have this total deviation that has six at negative seven. And five at six point six nine, so you're at thirteen point six nine. You this this isn't a legal map. Hi, this is Commissioner Berrigan. So what if we kept Guadalupe Washington in District Three and then we make the Spartan Keys neighborhood again back into District Seven? I mean, you're still gonna have a district. District six is still too small, but that would help seven. We have some conflicting uh, feedback from the community in regards to the Spartan Keys neighborhood, uh, with the preferences of being in District Three or District Seven. So, until we hear some further public uh, feedback best to keep it in District 7. Okay, so this would um, move 7 to 3% over and 3 to 2%, 2.5% under. Basically, swap districts, okay. populations, but um, you still need to come back to District Six. Okay, thank you.
Uh, Commissioner Martinez. I was going to say, so now that, that Guadalupe is back out of the change, what, how does that leave the demographics at the changes that were made back up at uh, talking about Ann Darling and Las Plumas? So are you, are you interested in District 3's new? No, District 5. Well, District 5 did make a change, so it's at the um, I thought you had given me the information with considering that Guadalupe switch that you then did make. Rev, that, that's only affecting three and seven. It doesn't change. Oh, five. Okay. Can you repeat? Can you repeat the five information for me again? Sure. The district five um, has a deviation of 6.69, 38.22% Asian CVAP. 2.24 African American CVAP and 45.75 Latino CVAP. Chris, this is Commissioner Berrigan. We made the change at Las Plumas for District 5 uh, from District right. 3 to District 5. Right, but I mean, I, we haven't made, I went over all the, the District 5 numbers. Uh, I, yeah. I was going to, Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to comment. So these changes reduce the Latino uh, uh, percentages in District 5 at least 2 to 3 percent, which is, I would think that's going to be an issue with people. You'll probably hear it because D D5 is the only district in the city that has a strong Latino count. Uh, the API, it's you know, it's about forty-seven nine or something like that. So you bring that two or three percent. That's a bit, that's a big change, I would think. Um, it also um, uh, AP, the API population is very strong in Berryessa and and District Eight in these other discussions, and I'm not sure. And again, they have uh, you know, that's I would think that's their strong areas of interest to not reduce their numbers. Again, I'm just commenting for anticipating discussions that would are going to arise from the thought. My, my basic thought, though, is that talking about the uh, and Darling change only, that might actually, that, as I recall, the area is very Latino, the and Darling. I've been around the and Darling school in the past, and uh, that might not uh, make too much difference, just that area going in. But I have that other, that other section you talked about high, up high. I don't think it's got that much Latino. I, I'll have to look later, but that, that might be a good balance. You know, the Ann Darling switch. And- uh, Sir, I don't, I'm, I don't know, you mean up here? No, no, the Ann Darling area, you know, it, uh, Commissioner Barragan talked about the Andarlene areas going into five, right? In in a proposal. No, we we decided not to take Andarlene to keep it in District Three because of the the area that with the natural boundary of the creek there behind it. It was more ideal to take uh, Mawberry down to Las Plumas. But again, I I understand what you're saying, but the it's just simple there. The Andarling is an extremely, it's a heavy Latino area. It quite relates to D5. I mean, it, it could, so that's all I'm saying. Because this issue is gonna arise, I, I'm just anticipating discussion later. And Las Plumas and all that is not very Latino. I don't think that three or 4%, two or 3% difference is gonna be an issue. It's reducing Latino in five, and it's the only district that is actually strongly Latino in the city, API-wise. Anyway, that's for discussion. 
Yes, I do want to echo Commissioner Martinez's concern um, because as we play around with these lines, I do notice that the Latino CVAP percentage keeps going down for um, in District 3 and District 5. And based on my notes, the, the current Latino CVAP percentage um, as the lines are drawn today, District 3 is at 36.5% and District 5 is at 48%. Point five percent. The other comment I wanted to make is a lot of these um, uh, blocks that we're trying to include in District Three, such as the Spartan Keys, Guadalupe, Washington, part of Gardner, as well as the Las Plumas area, um, are already drawn into D three in the Unity Plan. Um, so my suggestion would be if these are important to keep in D three that um, we can perhaps work with the unity plan as well tonight. Hey, so can I just uh, interject something here real quick? Um, we have uh, four folks who want to uh, present maps and, um, oh, there are three now, not, not four. Uh, but what I was going to ask and I was going to suggest is that if there are folks who have presented maps previously, that they only present on what has changed um, from their previous presentation. So um, I, I don't know if the commission feels comfortable with that direction, uh, but um, but yeah, that's what I would uh, ask for those folks who would like to present a map that you only present on um, on changes and. In addition to that, I, I think at this point we would need to limit uh, those uh, presentations to five minutes. I know it's been sort of uh, fast and loose in the past, but I, I just think at this point in time, it's uh, I think five minutes should be sufficient. This is Commissioner Ditlipson, I would second that if, if that's a motion. Well, I would entertain a motion. <laughs> I will, uh, I will move to limit the presentations to what has changed and for each presentation not to exceed five minutes. I would I second, second that. I second. second. Clerk, will you call the roll yes. on the motion? Um, Jonathan Bruns. Jonathan? I don't see his name here. He may have dropped off. D. Berrigan? Yes. Gloria is absent. Oh yeah, Jonathan's absent. Ramon? Yes. Andrew? Yes. Freddie? Yes. Sylvia? Yes. Sylvia? Yes. BJ? Yes. Anka? Yes. And Adina? Yes. And Fred? Yes. Okay, so I have three new presenters, um, and then Cheryl wanted to talk about their update, and um, Jeffrey Buchanan is also here um, for, I'm not sure if he has updates to the immunity map or just wanted to talk about it. So would you like me to start with the three brand new presentations? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to let, um, Megan's not here, so I'm by myself. So it might take me slightly longer because there's only, so I'm bringing in um, Todd and Marissa first so they can start and I'll bring in the other people. Good evening. I just need Marissa to pull up our map. Yep, I am here. Let me pull it up. <clears throat> One moment, please. Okay. I'm having some issues sharing. Give me one moment.
Can, are we able to go to someone else first? I'm having issues with the security setting on my computer to share my yeah. screen. I can go to um, Jeremy Plunkett. Thank you. Um, or Trudy Ellerbeck, whoever is ready to go first. I think Trudy's already in. I'm in and I'm ready. Okay, go ahead, Trudy. And let me know if you cannot see my screen. But thank you this evening. I'm Trudy from the board of the Mount Pleasant Neighborhood Association. Mm -hmm. Our singular purpose tonight, again, is to ensure that the boundaries that define our neighborhood remain intact. So many of our neighbors inside and outside our boundaries have availed themselves of the community that we offer. National night outs that have hosted over 300 guests, four installed little free libraries with three more ready to go in the coming weeks, five painted utility boxes to beautify White Road with two more in queue, plus a sizable mural on Martin Avenue. We've hosted many paint classes, jewelry making classes, arts and crafts classes. We've hosted emergency preparedness presentations and neighborhood watch meetings. We have a large CERT team in our own neighborhood and we are soon to have Mount Pleasant based regional meetings. We've hosted tree plantings to create canopy and reduce the heat island of East San Jose. It's imperative that we remain intact to continue our legacy of strong leadership and community development. I wanna share with you the boundaries of our neighborhood. On the north is Mount Vista Drive. On the west is South White Road. On the, excuse me, on the west is South White Road. On the south is Martin Avenue, which goes up to Clayton Road. And we have an arm that's up Squarey Drive here. We became alarmed when we saw a couple of maps. This is the D4 map as it appears uh, most recently. We were concerned that this area of Mount Pleasant was shaded differently than this area and this area. So we just want to reiterate that this is our neighborhood, these three X's, and we do not want those to be fragmented. The unity map, which the creators have since committed to correcting, suggested that Mount Pleasant could be divided. And we're happy again that we were able to meet with them and they committed to making those changes. And that again, as we want to reiterate one more time, is that the Mount Pleasant neighborhood should not be divided. Thank you for your time. Did you want to go to the next presentation? Yeah, let's do that. Um, Marissa, are you ready yet? Um, I might be, I might, I'll try again. I don't know exactly what the issue is, but change something in my settings. Yeah, let's go to the next one. Give me a few more minutes. Jeremy? It's still not working, thank you. Yes, hello. Hello. I'd like to uh, share my screen. Um, sorry, um, share screen, there we go. Do you see the PowerPoint here? Thanks. Yes. So the concern I, I'm uh, <clears throat> calling in to raise this evening is uh, something that I think is important to the process and for everyone to be aware of. And I just, it's uh, something I haven't heard anyone discuss in the, the entire time here. Uh, this is a key bit. If anyone wants to take a screenshot, I've uh, provided what I would ask you all to search on when you get a chance to Google staggered redistricting disenfranchises. And you will find this paper by Margaret B. Weston, circa 2012 or so. One person, no vote, staggered elections, redistricting, and disenfranchisement. Um, so the, the point of this is that what is at stake in this process is not what you think. Communities of interest are important. Fair representation is important. Uh, no one's vote should be suppressed or silent, silenced. Uh, but there's something bigger than those concerns that is at stake in this process. 
uh, the redistricting map actually determines who will be voting in the 2022 election. If you currently live in an odd number district, D3, for example, and uh, in that case, you're scheduled to vote a new council member in in the next election in 2022. If the process of redistricting moves the boundary out from under you, such that you now reside in D6, for example, you will not be voting in 2022 for a council member. You'll have to wait until the sitting incumbent D6 council member that you had no say in electing is done and, and out of office in 2024. That's when you get to vote. It's a six year period from the last time you got to vote for a council member. So voters affected by this, voters who are moved from an odd to an even district anywhere in the city, it's not just D3 and D6, et cetera, for two years, they're represented on the city council by a person they had no say in electing. They experience a six year gap in their ability to vote for a council member. And that is the very definition of disenfranchised. They have been disenfranchised by a vote of the city council that they likely weren't even aware was happening at the time. Uh, many of them might not even be aware of this even after the whole election is done and through, right? It, all it means is that no one appears on your ballot as a choice for a city council. You just aren't voting for a council member in this election. I was talking to someone about this the other day and uh, they said, well, if voters don't feel disenfranchised, then eh, pretty much they're not disenfranchised. Nobody's gonna do anything about this. This is a subtle legal distinction. It's a nitpicking, right? If, if you are an affected voter, you should feel disenfranchised. You have been disenfranchised. It doesn't matter, and this might sound a little dramatic, but it's in red because it's true and it's important you should pay attention. It doesn't matter if thugs with guns turn you away from the polling place or corrupt vote counting causes your ballot to be tossed out or arbitrary changes to ID requirements make you have to jump through hoops to vote. You know, you need a birth certificate or something, for example. All of these are forms of disenfranchisement. And a two year delay in your ability to vote and a two year period when you don't have any representation at your closest, most local level of government is also disenfranchisement. The pen is mightier than the sword, right? Everybody has heard that and this is exactly what it's talking about. You can be disenfranchised by a stroke of the pen and not even realize it. Is this <clears throat> how our democracy is supposed to work? Wikipedia says several constitutional amendments, 15th, 19th, 26th, require voting rights of US citizens cannot be abridged on account of race, color, previous condition of servitude, sex, or age. Turns out they left one out. Address of residence seems to be a loophole. <clears throat> Actually, this is a, a known issue in the legal constitutional law community, and it comes down to a bad call by the California Supreme Court in 1973. And that's not just my opinion. Actual lawyers say that too. Uh, Margaret B. Weston, for example. Uh, we, we know that Supreme Courts are not infallible. <clears throat> the court in 1973 said, fixing this issue would substantially interfere with the orderly operation of the four year staggered term system after every reapportionment. So basically they said, ah, we know it's not great, but it's, it's too inconvenient to deal with it. The uh, convenience of administering elections overrides the harm of voters getting disenfranchised. Mr. Plunkett, we, um, we were giving uh, folks with new presentations of uh, uh, five minutes and we've gone okay. over five minutes. Just wanted to know if you could wrap it up. Yeah, okay. I've emailed this to all the uh, commissioners so you can, you can look at the slides here. I'm just asking to contact your council member. They're the ones who actually make the vote on this. Let them know that this is a real issue that's important to you and your neighbors. And uh, it's not too late to fix this. I put together a map in 20 minutes, the one I submitted uh, this morning that actually minimizes the number of uh, voters who are affected by this issue. It's not a perfect map. I did it real quick. I'm not the experts. And I believe the experts, uh, the, the neighborhood volunteers and the other people that have submitted maps can take this into account and they can fix this. And I would ask you commissioners to ask your consultant to use his software to give you this data. He, he has the software that can show exactly which voters are affected for each map, how many voters are being disenfranchised. And it's something that the council should know when they eventually vote on this. Thank you, Mr. Plunkett.
Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Marissa, are you ready? Yep, I think the third time will be the charm. All right. All right, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Great. Hello, everyone, and thank you for your time. Marissa and I are presenting some community of interest information as Vendome residents. Next slide. This map shows the outline of the Vendome. It's a very small neighborhood, approximately only nine blocks long from Taylor Street to Ryland Bassett Street and only two blocks wide from 87 Freeway to North First. It is mainly the former property of the Vendome Hotel and includes apartment complexes, two condominium complexes, and many historic homes and duplexes. The next three maps are all from a similar vantage point for easy comparison. Next slide, please. You can see the Vendome in this area. We selected this map because it shows the topography. On the west side is the 87 freeway, the Guadalupe River, the Guadalupe Park, a shopping plaza, and a railroad, and the airports over there. These natural and artificial boundaries separate us from the Rose Garden Willow Glen in District 6. On the north side are the old county buildings, including the county jail, a tiny home village, and another upcoming project for the unhoused in the police parking lot. On the east side is the North First Street Urban Transit Village, which is in the final planning stages. The Japantown Air Light Rail Stop the second stop from Santa Clara Street and our adjacent neighborhoods of Hensley and Japantown. A picture is worth a thousand words. This illustrates the unique placement of our neighborhood, including the natural boundaries, separation from D6 and our close proximity to the downtown. Next slide, please. This shows the Vendome placement with the unity map. And the Vendome is outlined. I'm not sure about this inclusion of this little piece as our eastern boundary is actually north first. It clearly shows the Vendome carved out from the downtown into another district. At the last meeting, it was orally stated that it is planned to shift the line to San Pedro, which is almost worse as this would actually divide our small neighborhood and isolate, uh, isolate a small number of homes and residents against the freeway. We would also prefer to keep our adjacent neighborhoods whole and together as this map splits downtown into three districts around Japantown. It seems odd that some districts are majorly changed while others remain intact. It would really help if the unity map presenters could re-explain their formula and particularly explain their reasoning behind the deviations from the current district mapping and their purpose for splitting district three. Next slide, please. This shows the community map. The community map keeps the Vendome whole and connected with our adjacent downtown neighbors. While it is somewhat similar to the redistricting partners map, the community map was created from a grassroots neighborhood effort and has tried to reach out to the various neighborhood associations and residents for input and complies with the redistricting guidelines. We find the community map to be the fairest, best option for our neighborhood and the city. Next slide. These are some bullet points. We engage regularly with representatives from Northside, Hyde Park, Japantown, Hensley, and other downtown neighborhoods on various city government and neighborhood concerns, objectives improve, and improvements. Downtown development, the airport and its development, the Guadalupe River Park in general with the associated unhoused situation and the urban transit village all greatly impact ours and the surrounding neighborhoods. We also share a love of preserving our city's history through architecture and renovation of historic homes and have generally formed a community within our adjacent nearby neighborhoods. 
please keep the Vendome and downtown within District 3. Next slide. Thank you again for all your time and all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams, and uh, thank you, uh, Marissa. And Jeffrey Buchanan and Cheryl are here for the Unity and Community Maps. Um, I, can, I can let them over as panelists, or we can just allow them to speak to answer questions. Uh, I think we could uh, allow them, unless there, there are, if there are changes to their maps from last week, then um, they could speak to that as well. But uh, at this point, I would, I would think, uh, you know, we could just ask questions too. Okay, let me unmute um, Cheryl first. Um, yes, um, can you hear me? Yes. I would like to present the changes to my map, please. Okay. Okay, do I have, okay, join this panelist, there we go. Let me get my, okay, I gotta get my presentation up, hang on a second. Share. Okay, can you guys see my slideshow here? Let me see, hang on a second, slideshow. Yeah. Hang on a second. Okay, so this community map, I guess we'll call it 4.0. Um, so what I have to say is, here's the community map 4.0 that we're presenting. It looks, um, it basically the highest number for population is 105,000. The highest deviation is 3.91. The overall deviation is, um, 6.97, then I will get to, let me see, here's an overlay from the current D4 map to ours. So there's a few changes over here and over here, okay? Um, the It reduces, compared to the D4 map, it reduces overall deviation by 1.4, reduces highest population from 107 to 105, keeps five completely intact uh, while adding from four, keeps Reed Hill view where it's supposed to be, uh, it also follows the guidance from the District 3 Commissioner to expand the Alma area, and it keeps uh, Dove Hill and Ocala in their current districts. Uh, I'll go through the three changes here. District 3, 4, 5 boundaries. Uh, little Portugal over here. We spoke to David Vieira, who's a community leader in the area, and he said that the Portuguese community in this area has diminished quite a bit, and it is okay to leave that in D5 where it currently is. Then. Um, I, I, I thought we could pull up Plumas here, a little bit of that into D5 and D3 into various crossing because that balances out the population in that area. Um, those are those three changes. Then uh, District 578 boundaries. I recommend putting Dovefield back into District, uh, leave it in District 7. Um, last week they moved Dovefield into District 8, but Dovefield was is already currently in District 7. So I recommend not changing it. Reed Hill View, I recommend leaving it in five. Ocala, which had been expanded into D8, but was, I mean, was, was moved into D5, but it was supposed to be in D8 to begin with. I recommend leaving Ocala in D8, where it currently is in the city map, and leaving Dub Hill in seven, where it currently is in the city map. That balances the population out over there. And then the other change is the 367 boundary. Okay, so last time Dee mentioned that we should uh, explore expanding Alma down to San Jose Avenue. So I did move it down to San Jose Avenue and a little bit beyond. I filled in the whole area there. Okay, because Dee had recommended that we explore that. So I put that area into six. So these two areas are together here in six. Um, and then around the Deeradon, there's just a slight change. It just wasn't completely accurate how it was drawn. Okay, so that's the, what I'm looking at. I know that's the sensitive area. So like I said, Dee had mentioned that. And then we also got an email from a longtime resident in the Virginia um, Spartan Keys. And she said she likes being in District 7. She feels like she's better served down there. I think Dee knows her. She's a very longtime resident and she likes being in D7 actually. She doesn't feel represented here. So the other alternative for this area right here is like you guys had just mentioned, instead keep, because Alma is currently in D7 down here. So you could keep those two, Guadalupe, Washington in six, and put Virginia Martha, keep that in three. So that would leave Virginia Martha in three, it would leave this in seven, and these two would go, and then the numbers are still basically about the same. And this is the commissioner's D4 map versus community map. You can see the numbers over here for the CBAP are basically the same. They, they pretty much don't change. 
Okay, so I think, um, did I use up my five minutes? No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I stopped so fast. Anyway, so that's the main changes because I want to keep it simple and I know we're trying to get through this meeting today. I don't know if anybody has any questions. I will just leave it at that at this point. And it does still, you know, keep the, uh, well, anyway, I won't get it, you know, there's things, every, there's all kinds of concerns for people. But if anybody has any questions or anything they would like me to review or anything, I'd be glad to do that. But again, this this area I know right here is a is a area of concern. Obviously, um, everything that I had five seven eight is just put that back where it belongs, put that back where it belongs, and put that back where it, where it belongs, meaning where it currently is. Okay, that's the five seven eight boundaries. Is just put those pieces back to where they currently are instead of where they're moved on the D four, and then up here, put little Portugal back to where it currently is in D five. Okay. And then just the Berryessa expand five over here and three up there because just to take it reduces uh, District Four from 100 and almost 108,000 down to uh, it reduces it by 2,200 people. So it brings you know 2,200 people down out because D7 was like I said at, at 107,000. And so those are those. And then like I said, this area down here, I know this is the high area of concern that. You know, maybe it could go that way. Maybe it could go that way. I, I'm just suggestions based on what we had talked about. That's all. Those so one one of the challenges is that District Four has an excess of like 19,000 population as it stands, and District Three has about 6,500, which is why a lot of District, um, um, like District Three and District Five that are adjacent to it, needs to absorb a lot of that population and. There's a lot of um, there's a high concentration of also Asian population up there, so it ends up diluting the Hispanic population because of that. Yeah, and if oh, oh. If, if okay if, now, if, uh, yeah, I just wanted yeah now you're definitely over the five minutes, and so I just okay, yeah to... just real quick if Chris wanted to pull it up, it's map number seven seven one three six. Just saying if you okay. want reference. So that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If so um, I'm going to unmute Jeffrey Buchanan and see if I, if he has an actual map to present or if he just wanted to talk about the map he's already presented. Hi. Um, right. Yeah, this is Jeffrey. I just wanted to run real quickly through the uh, the, the changes in, in our map. We got a couple of slides with the, the card outs of the changes. And um, I think Andreas Cantero was, was also on to get, promote him. Okay. And then we can be real brief. I'm here. Oh, excellent. All right. Let me just uh, load up. Uh, sorry. Always forget how to do the. Darn. Okay. Oh, I'm. Uh, okay, there you go. Okay. All right. Sorry, just loading up the screen share. Let me just zoom down to the. Okay, the actual changes. Um, uh, Andreas, do you want to start with uh, the first change in terms of uh, Mount Pleasant? Yeah, so uh, as part of the process of taking input and listening to the community, uh, as was mentioned by Trudy Ellerbach, uh, we had a conversation and they expressed their concerns with the uh, division of Mount Pleasant at the northern part. So if you notice, um, the, the, the area in green right there is now whole and Mount Pleasant Neighborhood Association is no longer divided under the unity map. Uh, yesterday, the, we heard loud and clear that uh, there was a not yesterday, last week, that there was a desire to make some shifts in uh, District 7 in response to some of the community input. And so in order to make up for the population that was gained in D5, uh, Dove Hill from District 7 was inserted into District 8, which happens to be an area that has gone back and forth, contrary to testimony that's been stated in the past. Dove Hill in the past has been part of District 8. Some folks aren't aware of that, but those of us who've actually worked in those communities uh, have, um, we're aware of the fact that uh, that area has shifted back and forth from seven to eight uh, every once in a while. Yeah. So in, in terms of, uh, in, in the, between six and one, um, the Cory neighborhood, um, for some reason, the city's uh, mapping of the Cory neighborhood doesn't reflect the Cory Neighborhood Association's uh, consideration of their boundaries. And so uh, for that reason, um, we kind of had split it unnecessarily. And so, uh, put Quarry neighborhood into six, 
And again, this is the map that we submitted, but I don't believe redistricting partners had enough time to put into your packet. So hopefully uh, for the next meeting, it can be reflected. So apologies for that uh, to the commissioners. Um, other than that change, um, there has been a lot of a lot of discussion uh, around uh, certainly the, the the block of neighborhoods around Spartan Keys, Washington, Guadalupe, Tamian, and Goodyear Mastic. Um, we, you know, in, in talking with those communities over the last week, and in particular, we've heard a lot of interest in those communities staying together. You know, particularly since those are some of the most densely Latino neighborhoods within uh, District Three, and there's a lot of concern about them staying together as a block. I think you've seen the commissioners how difficult it is to try to move population south. Um, I think you're probably starting to see a little bit about why our map moves population in three from four to three and then west rather than south because of this issue with the potential cracking uh, if you do move south rather than west. Um, you know, we've also heard concerns from uh, the public about you know, why are we swooping in and uh, grabbing the Delmas Park and Gardner neighborhoods? Uh, so we took Tamian out of six and put it into three and then put Delmas and Gardner into six for more coherence. In the end, it also creates a unity in terms of the LGBT community of interest. We've heard testimony on uh, the Dearden community of interest. Um, and we're actually like three census blocks short of containing the entirety of the PBID uh, the, the property-based improvement district for the downtown association. And so if commissioners were, were interested in that, you know, certainly we could add those three uh, census blocks to make the PBID entirely within district six. Um, we heard from the VP community. So we, we made them whole in district nine, the four, or I'm sorry, in district two, the four corners neighborhoods, uh, making them whole in district nine. Um, and then um, with some of the population swaps, we found we could go back to more of the original boundary in District 5. Um, and again, as commissioners are seeing, it's really the more that you move 5 up into 4, it, it does a lot to change the CBAP uh, for the Latino population. And so with that in mind, uh, we, we made, uh, made that swap because it was possible with our new map. Um, it brings our, our, our uh, deviation down by about 0.4%. So it's, I think it's sitting at about 84 no uh, real major uh, shifts in terms of the demographics, but certainly willing to answer any questions. Again, oh, uh, in regards to the PBID uh, and the downtown association and some of the businesses, uh, this would be the area that we would add uh, to encompass the entirety of the property-based improvement district that um, some business owners have spoke to. You know, it's a, it, we could make it, it would increase the deviation, but if uh, the commission thought that was important, we, we could certainly do that. Thanks so much, glad to take questions. Thanks, Jeffrey. Tony, do we have any more presentations? No, those the people public? that um, submitted their names to me ahead of the meeting. Okay. So um, at this time then, why don't we just go to the uh, members of the public that would wish, uh, wish to speak. Okay, I have Jonathan Karp followed by Greg Rippa. And again, I'm, I don't have Megan, I'm used to her clicking unmute. So I think I... Okay, I have a new myself. It's John Karp. I'm a, um, a mayor of Sacramento as a state. I've lived in Native Park since 2002. The updated union map is the only map under consideration by the commission that does not radically dilute the votes of Latino residents in downtown District 3, 6, and East San Jose District 5. I agree with uh, commissioners, um, uh, Martinez and Cardenas, that that's a very strong concern. The uh, maps D4 and the community map remove three of the five most Latino neighborhoods out of D3 downtown, which is a form of dilution to the Latino vote. The unity map keeps Washington, Guadalupe, full ensures voices aren't diluted. It ensures a powerful neighborhood equal vote by placing Washington, Guadalupe in the unity map's eastern downtown district, between Tammy and Spartan Keys and Goodyear Mystic, three other pre predominantly the index neighborhoods in D3 today, therefore maintaining community of interest. As far as the black community, uh, the unity map, particularly in what uh, was formerly D2 and formerly D6, it increases the black vote 
by one third in both cases. So with so few black Americans in our city due to long legacy of racism, redlining in San Jose and displacement, we should only support plans to grow the black community share of the vote and the unity map does precisely that. And so uh, it is my concern that we don't, do not dilute the Latinx vote in the downtown area uh, and in the predominantly Latinx areas that are south of 280. Thank you very much. Greg Rippa, followed by Vicky. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Um, I just wanted to comment briefly on a couple of previously presented maps that I uh, presented um, maybe a few uh, meetings ago and uh, have written in um, in the past several meetings as well. Um, I just wanted to remind you that um, since we've been talking a lot about the um, API and Hispanic Latinx uh, CVAP uh, districts that um, my map is one of the few that does um, protect a lot of those um, districts. It also increases um, the Hispanic and Latinx uh, plurality CVAP um, number of districts by one. So that now there's two uh, plurality uh, CVAP Hispanic Latinx districts. Um, so I just wanted to point that out if you wanted to go back and take a look at that as an, addi an additional consideration. Uh, but barring that, um, if you do want to kind of just say pass on it due to um, some potential bold changes, um, I urge you to support the Unity map. Thank you so much. Okay, Vicky put her hand down. So I have um, Ben Vo followed by Victor Vasquez. Yeah, um, good evening, members of the commission, um, members of the public, my name is Ben Vo, and I'm here today, um, I've been listening um, to all the presentations and for the past few weeks, um, I think in my opinion, that it's worth taking a look, overlaying maps um, on top of the maps already presented, maps of renters, of immigrants, of average household income, and especially our neighbors who are at the most risk of being displaced by rising rents and how that factors into um, just what has been already discussed in the discourse today. Um, and I think majority minority districts have a lot um, to not just um, repair, um, rebel against, and fix, but that decisions in local government are being made about them, without them, which is unfair. And we know that redistricting affects political power, and that representation means that we're at the table, but sometimes our skin folk aren't always our kin folk. And we need more than a fair shot of electing candidates that can represent our worldview and fight for our concerns and action to represent the interest um, of those who have been most disenfranchised by redistricting in the past. So to that end, um, I support the unity map and how it creates a more equitable city for all of our neighbors. And thank you for your time. Victor Vasquez, followed by Elizabeth Chin Hale. Good evening, my name is Victor Vasquez. I'm here to present a perspective from some of Mayfair. Um, organization is based on being with community, supporting their leadership and organizing around resident-led solutions. Um, as you know, part of the work that we do is working with children and families and to shift, um, address systematic inequalities that we see in our community because we want to see a May for East Side and how they're thriving. Last year, uh, about two years ago, at the beginning of the COVID pandemic, we knocked on doors, engaged over 50,000 families on the census and voter education campaigns in a campaign called Power Not Fear. And the purpose is to make sure that our community was correctly counted and that they felt empowered to actually engage in the democratic process locally and beyond. Our slogan recognized that injustice that we face um, has been because of the years of racism, gerrymandering, exclusion, language tests, voter disenfranchisement due to our color of our skin, the fact that we live in poverty and the cultural makeup of our communities. Um, and so for us, it's important to, to remind people that, you know, we're still dealing with a lot of issues that only through uh, having a strong 
of representation um, for Latino and BIPOC communities in District 5. And we want to see that representation grow in terms of voters, in terms of like the uh, issues that we see in the solutions. And we believe that that comes through unity. Uh, at the end of the day, we believe we support the unity maps. Uh, we support the process that is bringing communities together, aligning community input. Um, it's looking at the diversity that we need to see in terms of ensuring that the voice of Asian, Hispanic, Black, and Indigenous people, renters, undocumented folks are, are represented. And because we also ask our, our you know, neighbors as well who also want to stay within District 7 and keep Green Hill View in District 5, we support the unity match. Thank you for your time. Elizabeth Chin Hale, followed by Tim Clausen. Hi, yes, my name is Elizabeth Chin. Uh, can people hear me? Okay. Yes. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Chin Hale. I'm the president of San Jose Downtown Resident Association. I previously spoke, and at that point, I was more concerned about the Downtown Resident Association district will be dividing it too. And um, and I, I I hear today with the unity mappers that they have taken that into consideration, but now they're moving us from D3, the entire district from D3 into D6. So that poses two problems from my perspective. First, I think you speak to the downtown resident. I think most most of us will tell you that we belong, we feel more belonging with D3, the current D3 neighbors rather than the D6. And uh, we share much more of the common problems than we have with people in Willow Glen or the Rose Garden area. And number two, today's uh, new presentation uh, about this enfranchisement also alarm me because we will be precisely the people going from the odd to even district. And now we are an area that's going through rapid changes because the building of the San Jose downtown and because of coming in Google. So under this scenario, when we move from D3 to D6, we'll have two years represented on the city council by a person that we had nothing to say in the election. And we will also experience six year gap in our ability to vote for a council representative. That is a grave concern for a district like us, which are going through rapid changes. Thank you for all your hard work. Appreciate it. Thank you. Tim Clausen, followed by Ted Earl. Hi, my name is Tim Clausen from the Vendome neighborhood. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Community is defined as a group of people living in the same place or having a particular characteristic in common. The Vendome is one of the oldest neighborhoods in D3 that shares so many characteristics in common. Our adjoining neighbors, the Hensley, Japantown, Northside, Hyde Park, as well as other neighborhoods like Nagley Park, all share many common interests, urban and transit villages, commercial and residential developments, restoration and preservation of our historic homes, the unhoused and increased crime. We stay engaged as a community. These relationships have been forged through decades of bonding. The unity map disenfranchises us from these long established partnering neighbors. Um, carving off the Vendome from downtown core completely violates the Fair Maps Act. The Fair Maps Act is designed to easily identifiable, defined um, as easily identifiable boundaries that follow natural or artificial barriers such as rivers, highways, and rail lines. That would be the Guadalupe River and Park, the 87 Parkway, and the Coleman Shopping Center. The community map meets the Fair Maps Act while the unity map does, not, does the opposite. The community map maintains a geographical um, integral um, of the city, integrity of the city, um, which the Fair Maps Act clearly states that the re redistricting map should be respected in a manner that minimizes its division. It's not the task at hand for the commissioners to do the right to, to do the right, um, the wrongs of our past by making big changes. Please adhere to the assembly bill number 847, the fair and inclusive redistricting for municipals, municipalities and political subdivisions fair map act. Please recommend community map for council consideration. Keep the Vendome in D3. I don't know where. Ted Earl, followed by Andrew Macias. Yes, good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, I'm Ted Earl, neighborhood leader in District 9 in the 
current president of the Thousand Oaks Neighborhood Association, representing hundreds of households in our area. Uh, first, I want to thank the commissioners for their hard work and diligence in tackling this task. You've all put in many, many hours of service, and I want to acknowledge and thank you all for your efforts. I'm speaking again tonight to ask that you continue to keep the Erickson, Thousand Oaks, Pinehurst, and Tanglewood Tatra neighborhoods together in D9. Uh, our four neighborhoods have many issues in common. We've built strong relationships over many years with each other and our council office, and we have addressed all of these issues together. Uh, we've also helped build the District 9 Leadership Group, which may not survive if our neighborhoods were to be moved out of D9. I wanna lend my voice in support of the community map in the way that it treats my neighborhood and our objectives. Those objectives being minimizing the number of disrupted neighborhoods, forming compact, manageable districts with logical borders, and collaborating with neighborhood leaders throughout the city. I would just like to add just a quick comment on the unity map. Um, you know, the backers of that map have entrenched interests and deep pockets. You know, therefore they can enable their supporters to show up to these meetings and be very vocal. Their numbers here may not accurately reflect the actual attitudes of San Jose residents. I believe that Commissioner Wright said it well early in the call, talking about the goals of this commission are to maintain the existing boundaries and neighborhood integrity as much as possible. The community map is the one that accomplishes these goals. Please support the community map. Once again, thank you very much for your time and consideration as you go forward in this process. And I'll yield back the remainder of my time. Thank you. Andrew Macias followed by Nancy. Good evening council members and thank you for your time. My name is Andrew Macias and I am once again here to speak in support of the unity map. I appreciate how it addresses the extreme inequalities I've witnessed and how it treats the east side with respect. The unity map ensures the Reed Hill view, Reed Hill view is in the main east side district with Alan Roth. I appreciate all the time and considerations I've been watching you all make in order to try and best serve your respective districts. And the fact that you've made so many adjustments to your existing options is proof that you are here, that you hear some of what we are saying, but it's clear we need a voice of the community to speak a little bit louder. So we know that we're going to have to make splits in these current lines, no matter what. And I know many of these homeowners associations we have heard from are communities of interest, but I'm here to represent the marginalized communities of interest. The only way to do that fairly is with the unity map. And as we just found out this evening, you will still be allowed to oversee the district that elected you until your term is up. I am, however, concerned about the changes Jeremy Plunkett pointed out about being changed and who gets to vote and when. The D3 district has been particularly vocal yet not understanding about why we need to change their numbers. And I believe I heard 8.4 was the new PVID for our updated uh, unity map. So we have ears as well and we are listening. But it's not just about covering a spread of how many people of what color live where. It's about making sure where these lines are and that they're not cut in such a way that our voices get drowned out by the loudest few of all we've gotten their way. With the way these communities are growing, we have to be looking to the future if we really want to make this happen. I feel the, uni the unity map does this. Additionally, I wanted to remind those neighborhoods and homeowners associations that we are not actually going to build any walls or cut any communication in any communities. We've been catering to those wealthy affluent communities for long enough to know that they are not going to listen to us until we make changes happen. I am not a special interest group. I am a member of San Jose who supports the outreach to marginalized members of our community who have been ignored or who do not. Nancy, followed by Krista De La Torre. Nancy? Oh. I guess I was muted, sorry. Okay, here I go. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great, thank you so much. I support the community map. It achieves the same thing as the unity map without disrupting and annihilating entire communities. It has a natural, distinct legal boundaries that make sense. Tearing up our neighborhoods would be um, really weird where the unity map shows us being torn at the west end of district three it splits us at san pedro being part of the vendome neighborhood and living on san pedro i would be part of a neighborhood that is a wedge that belongs to no one is involved with no one and 
would be um, our section of neighborhood would just be a little small misfit neighborhood that doesn't belong in six and um, belongs where it's always been and with its rich history in District 3. So I support the community map and we are a very tightly knit community with the communities around us. I volunteer. I have been a volunteer my entire life in this community. And um, I am very, very devoted to um, uh, my Vendome neighborhood and the neighborhoods, Japantown, Nagley Park, Hensley, um, surrounding areas of the downtown region. So please, Keep that in mind when you make your decision. The community map achieves all of that. Thank you so much. Krista De La Torre, followed by Wade. Hi, good evening. My name is Krista De La Torre, and I'm here tonight to voice my support of the Unity Map. The Unity Map is backed by a growing coalition of labor, community, and civil rights groups, and it will work to keep communities together and ensure that every single San Jose City resident has a fair say in the representation. Unlike the D4 and community maps, UDMAP will not dilute the voices of working people or marginalized communities. Compared to the other maps, the UDMAP is by far the best for working families and renters. It unites renters in the dense neighborhoods of downtown, central, and south San Jose. It also works to unite multifamily neighborhoods along the I-85 corridor like Hoffman Viamonte. Um, these areas have been poorly represented in the past, and so this would help give working families and communities of color who often rely on rental housing, a chance for leadership that better represents their needs. The UD map also works to address San Jose's history of redlining while keeping communities of interest together. Unlike the D4 and community map, um, the D4 and community map will suppress the voice of not only renters, but of the Latinx, Black, and Asian communities. Specifically, the Unity map, or the community map and the D4 map um, move four of the five densest Latinx neighborhoods in D3 out of the district into D7, which would crack the Latino community in District 3. Um, these maps actively divide and suppress ethnic communities. So I encourage you today to please advance the Unimap. map. Um, it is by far our city's best option. It understands how to keep um, communities of interest together, ensure equitability, and value the voice of every San Jose City resident. Thank you so much for your time. Wade, followed by Sandra D. Wade, you're unmuted. Hello? I, I can hear you very, very faintly. But I can't understand what you're actually saying. Wade, I'm going to move on to somebody else. Please put your hand back up and see if you can get your microphone fixed. Um, Sandra D, followed by Janice. Thank you, commissioners, very much for your time. I appreciate all your energy and devotion to this very difficult task. One thing, if I was a commissioner, that I would appreciate would be a summary map that compared the community map, the commission's map, and the unity map all on one page so I could see if we were indeed where the numbers were, what the uh, deviation was, what the uh, racial makeups are, um, and what the populations were. So I would personally like to ask redistricting partners to put that together so all of us could see it in one page. Thank you. I would like to tell you that I've listened to these items. I find them very interesting, but I feel that the community map and the commission's map are less drastic, still provide adequate representation for all voices in the city. The unity map is very driven and very broken up and what it does to D3 and several of the other districts, including D10 is just not, um, what I would vision for uniting the city. But thank you again for your time. I'm hoping that next time I get to see a summary map so I can keep my little brain straight. Thank you. Janice, followed by Felwina.
Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, so I agree with the person that uh, went before me. Um, it, it's uh, basically, we would like to see the differences between all the maps. Um, but it, quite frankly, it's not about history. It's not about things of the past. It's about the future. And it's about going forward. And the community map keeps neighborhoods together. The community map seems to do less destructive things to the neighborhoods. And, you know, I cannot, you know, we can't fix the past. You know, we have to move forward. And I, you know, have to go with the community map that seems to keep more things together than tear things apart. Thank you. Felwina followed by Hector Moreno. My name is Felwina Opiso Mondina, a resident of D4 and a member of the Filipino Association of Workers and Immigrants or PAWIS. I am here again um, to express and manifest my strong support for the unity map, a map that ensures the political voice of working people and tenants like me and our community members. San Jose has a history of his racist redlining that largely coincides with our current lines. The unity map will right that historical wrong. This is the only way for us to move forward. The unity map promotes fairness, conforming to the Fair Maps Act and the California Voting Rights Act. As a, and as a resident of D4, I really like that the unity map um, preserves the majority minority AAPI seats in D4. The unity map brings and keeps the communities together and it doesn't dilute votes from the marginalized, like the majority of our community members who are low wage earners and majority are also renters. Thank you. Hector Moreno, followed by Blair Beekman. Good evening, um, commissioners. Thank you for your time once again. Um, it's Hector Moreno um, here again to, to show support for the Unity Map. Um, I just feel that this is uh, the best map. And um, just like the previous caller said, we cannot. Um, do the, uh, fix the wrongs of the past, but we can we can um, fix the wrongs of the present. So the unity map does that. Um, I hope you choose to be on the right side of history in San Jose history, um, because growing up in this town, um, we were always left out in the east side. So please keep the east side together and please support the unity map. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great evening. Blair Beekman, followed by Forrest Peterson. Hi, Blair Beekman here. Uh, thank you uh, for your meeting tonight. Um, I'm getting the feeling you're starting to solve the split district issues of District 6. Uh, thank you for that, I guess. Um, with that problem uh, being worked on, I think that leaves uh, issues of District 7, District 3, District 5, uh, to consider. Um, I have a real question that all the maps uh, these days, they, they don't show the street names on them. This issue was an issue in the beginning of the sessions. We let it go for a bit. I hope you can start to put street names on the future of these maps so we can get a very exact picture of uh, where, where things are going to be. Because what are we going to do about the future of uh, the Gardner area? And where exactly is 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 District uh, 7, 6, and 3 going to make the connection. I think it can go, you know, up closer, uh, a little bit past the freeway into the uh, Reed Williams neighborhood area south of San Jose State. I think 7 can go that far. And I think we need to learn that uh, District 3 doesn't have to take on, it's got a lot of things in it. It's got the airport, it's got three or four BART stations in it. It's got a bunch of economic items that, uh, I think I think we can afford to to push into District Three a little bit more. Um, district Three, District Six, and District Four were all built on huge districting in the past, so they could be in huge economic engines. And I think it's time to consider 
you know, the equity engines of, 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 of D7 and, and how it can really move close to uh, the Google Village area as much as possible and, and into perhaps uh, the, the San Jose State neighborhood. Uh, it's a good fit. It, something can feel natural in doing that. We shouldn't be afraid of it. And just like five can move into a little Portugal area, I feel, with the BART station there. Thank you. Forrest Peterson, followed by Maria Rocha. Hi, my name is Dr. Forrest Peterson. Uh, I'm here to speak on in support of Unity Map. Uh, I am a researcher at Stanford University in civil and environmental engineering. However, uh, for the last five years, I've been doing research and career technical education in uh, for the construction industry. And I, through listening to the discussion, I was invited by some colleagues to to tune into this and, and better understand the demographics that I've been working with for these years. I've worked predominantly with students in District 4 and District 7, but I'm now aware that I have not worked with students in District 5, which actually seems a little bit, um, seems a little bit like I should have been working with students in District 5. And then of course I work with the college over in District 8. And one of the projects that my students work on is redlining and environmental justice and social justice. And each year I task uh, these high school students who are earning dual, dual enrollment credits from the District 8 uh, college to think about something in their community and from the standpoint of a public policy or from a regional development standpoint. And I'm thinking that this year, uh, regional development, uh, regional districting could be a topic that help the students better understand the environment that they live in. And then just uh, having grown up in the South County, uh, I just wanted to mention that District 2 and 10 uh, actually looks uh, fairly correct from my understanding of growing up in that area, and that's a better division. Thank you. Maria Rocha, followed by Neil Park McClintic. Hi, good evening, commissioners. Uh, thank you for your time this evening and um, for letting us all speak. Um, my name is Maria Rocha. I would like to express my concern this evening for um, a lot of these uh, of, of the maps here that were stated, especially uh, the Berryessa, Penitencia, nor and North San Jose area. I am in support of the Unity Map, and it doesn't limit me, but other compete. Uh, competing neighborhoods. The unity map limits how many other neighborhoods are within that Berryessa district, which I definitely support so that our voices aren't diluted or split among competing um, neighborhoods. These maps keep our community together as it should be. And we know that during the census of 2010, our Berryessa community came together to demand all of their neighborhoods to be included into the council district, which was a very important time. It would be unfair and not right to split this wonderful community of interest. It would be great also to see a change in all of these maps. It would help all the communities that are less fortunate. It would be, it would like, I would like to see the help be directed in helping the Latino, Black, and Asian communities. The community maps helps us keep, keeps us all together and united as one. I would definitely not want their voices to weaken or split among other competing neighborhoods. Thank you this um, this evening for your time, Commissioners. Neil Park McClintic, followed by Tessa Woodmancy. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Neil Park McClintic, uh, and I am one of the community organizers for the Unity Map. And I wanted to express support today for the Unity Map fittingly, um, but on a serious note, as someone who does identify with the LGBTQ community um, as an openly bisexual person in a happy relationship with another man, I think it's really important that the, um, the, the Unity Map has found a way to incorporate all of the heavily LGBTQ areas of interest um, into one single district, including the area along the Alameda Corridor, which has the Bill Wilson Center, a rainbow crosswalk, and many young multifamily renters in newer housing who are disproportionately um, in that category of LGBTQ. Along with Post Street, uh, which has become sort of a new spot, um, a new hub uh, with sort of um, the, the queer club there being the anchoring point um, and SOFA as well, which also tends to be home 
to many different um, LGBTQ events done by Silicon Valley Pride and others, such as the um, uh, the drag show that is the first, I believe it's Saturday, it's been a while because of COVID, um, of the month. So yeah, I think it's a really important factor to consider. The Unity Map has taken this community of interest into consideration and has drawn the borders as such in a way that is logical and inclusive. Thank you very much. Tessa Woodmancy, followed by Sarah Wang. Tessa? Good. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Yes. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Let's see. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh. Oh, okay, great. Okay, good. Maybe we can start over. All right. So basically, um, if you want to reset the clock, that'd be great. So, um, well, you know, I like what somebody said. Our little brains need help. <clears throat> and the fact is, you're one, you're not <clears throat> letting us know about the meetings. Thank goodness for being friends with Blair Beekman. Let me know about it. Um, and then, you know, like, I love that in my Charter Review Commission, um, I've been getting emails, you know, saying this is the agenda, this is the date. Maybe I didn't sign up, but you're not making it easy to know how to sign up and what to do that. So we get notified of these strange meetings on strange days. And I guess it used to be on another day. These meetings were on Thursday, then all of a sudden today. So anyway, so that would be very helpful for more better community outreach. Then in terms of, you know, the maps, you know, like I like what the woman said, our small brains, it's very difficult. And like Blair said, you don't show us the the names of the streets and so you really hard to know where it's really cut off like in terms of the unity map where district six gets that little island in it i'm not sure if my neighborhood's in it or not so these are these are critical issues that you can't read the maps and when somebody recommended that we be able to compare these maps side by side i really think we do need a more public um you know discussion that could be like a, a, a webinar about this and we can look at it together and, and discuss things, you know, more in more granularly. And I, I did like the unity map because of my having trouble with my own neighborhood association, part of district six, actually even my, my, my council member, um, Deb Davis, you know, I like the fact that I'd be more engaged with uh, district three um, because I feel more alignment with their, um, their council member and their issues, which are not about jobs and economic gain, but more about basic needs. And I think we need to get back to that. So I like the idea of being closer to the people of District 3 versus my district. Sarah Wang, followed by Marnie Kamzen. Sarah Wang. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm sorry, okay, I was mute. Um, my name is Sarah Wing, and my family lives in District 6 for decades. We support the community map that keeps our community together, and we strongly oppose the unity map. Seems to me the unity map is pushed by some special interest group, and one of them is Asian North Alliance. My family is Asian American. I have to say the Asian North Alliance does not and cannot represent my family and our Asian community. So please support the community map and thank you very much. Have a good evening. Marnie Kamzen followed by Edmundo Escargega. Hi, can you reset the clock please? Hi. Thank you, commissioners, for all your time and hard work on this issue. I do not envy the task you have ahead of you. This is the fourth redistricting meeting that I have attended, and I find that I'm disheartened by the divisiveness that is being fomented by special interest groups that ironically call themselves a unity map. Our city has many issues that we are dealing with, but with a focus entirely on race, this map is creating wedges between neighborhoods that have worked together for years. Last week, the commissioners spent almost 55 minutes listening to and then dissecting the community map presentation with their comments and questions. The unity map presentation took seven minutes and there were no questions from the commissioners, not one. This has puzzled me. How can the commissioners pass on a map to the council when they have not 
publicly examined and scrutinized and questioned it. The community map has been left off the redistricting website and was not addressed properly by the consultant, but it has the lowest standard deviation of any of the maps presented. With the known growth that is coming to D3 and downtown and all the affordable and supportive housing that is coming as well to D3, in addition to a large amount of market rate housing, we need to pay attention to population. The community map has adhered rigorously to the rules of redistricting, keeping communities of interest, contiguity, compactness, and other requirements. I am asking the commissioners to examine the unity map with the same necessary attentiveness to detail. I'm asking the commissioners to send the community map to the city council. Um, no special interests or deep pockets are involved in the community map. This map has undergone rigorous discussions with many existing communities of interest please support it and send it to the city council because it's the best map out there edmundo followed by marissa good evening commission uh, i want to speak in favor of the unity map i am a lifelong resident of san jose uh, currently district two formerly district three we need a map that promotes fairness and a map that keeps our neighborhoods and communities whole. The, the unity map will not suppress the voices of our Latinx, Black, and Asian communities. The unity map is the only map that does not radically suppress our votes in District 3 and 5. I urge the commission to choose the unity map. Thank you. Marissa, followed by Eddie. Good evening. Thank you, commissioners, for your hard work throughout the redistricting process. I would like to voice my support for the community map. The effort made by the creators of the community map is impressive. In addition to adhering to the redistricting principles, they have made a concerted effort to speak with neighborhood associations and residents to create a map that keeps communities intact across the entire city of San Jose, including downtown and the surrounding area. The unity map does not unify my neighborhood, the Vendome. I strongly encourage you to submit the community map to City Council, as it is the only map that keeps neighborhoods and communities unified. Thank you. Annie, followed by Jenny. Hi, this is Annie, and I appreciate the opportunity to share my views with my community. I wish to express my support for the community map because it maintains my neighborhood, the Vendome. I know you've heard from a lot of us this evening in District 3, and it meets the state required and adopted criteria for redistricting as opposed to the uni unity map, which removes the Vendome from District 3, or worse, places some a small number of the homes in our neighborhood in a different district, which does not conform with the state criteria. Specifically, state criteria requires that districts maintain contigu cont contiguity and maintain neighborhoods. The community map maintains contiguity of the residential apartments, condos, duplexes, and homes with the adjacent residential areas of the Hensley and Japan Town. These are similar neighborhoods with the same goals and purposes and will share the future urban village. The unity map severs the Vendome from its contiguous neighborhoods, thereby dividing our shared concerns and purposes. Further, the state rec criteria requires that redistricting maps follow the lines created by natural and artificial boundaries and maintain geographic compactness to ensure continuity. The Vendome is separated from all other districts by the expressway, the Guadalupe River, a railway, and city buildings. The community map observes, the, observes these boundaries while the unity map does not. I would like to understand why the unity map has excluded the Vendome from G3, but in light of our exclusion, I would like to see the community map be adopted because it includes my neighborhood in D3 where it belongs and adheres to the state criteria and maintains our contiguous neighborhood. Jenny Zhao, followed by Sherry Taylor. Hi, um, good evening. Uh, first of all, thank you for all the commissioner uh, for your uh, hard work and your time. Um, I would um, 
agree 100% with the previous speaker that you should try to put all the maps together so we can have a better visual um, to understand uh, the differences. Um, I'm here to support the community map and I, I hope you can advance it. It is the map that puts together by the neighborhood volunteers. It keeps our community together uh, for both, uh, for all the residents, include the renters. We do not approve the unity map. It is pushed by special interest group. It divides our communities. And uh, I'm an Asian American. Um, um, our family immigrants from Asia, um, but the Asian Law Alliance do not represent us and cannot represent my family. Thank you. Sherry Taylor, followed by Wade. Sorry, Sherry, I just clicked a lot of talk. There you go. Hi. Um, my name is Sherry Taylor, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, this has been a very interesting uh, meeting. I've never um, sat in on a redistricting meeting, and it's so, um, and I, I love how democracy in action is working. So I am calling in uh, support of the community map. Um, I The one thing I do have to say of listening um, through the whole, all the conversations is how, um, it, it, you know, in spite of the fact that when I look at the unity map, I don't feel like, I feel like it's not a, as good as the community map. It just concerns me that we have to use a lot of language that is divisive when in the end, we're all part of San Jose and we're all human beings and we're all working together to make the city better. Um, and so, um, and I don't, I haven't heard that uh, coming from anybody uh, supporting the community map side. So um, I, again, I thank you for your hard work and um, that's all I have. Thank you. Wade, followed by Ms. Rayan Mendoza. Hello, I'm from the Hensley, Japan town, Ben Dome, neck of the woods. And what I seem to be hearing the, the consistent strain throughout the evening is it sounds like there's a, a grassroots contingent and a special interest contingent. The grassroots contingent seems to be talking neighborhoods and community as in my house relation to the next house and this neighbor relation to that neighborhood. The special interest, when I hear them talk, they use terms like community of interest and they'll actually say special interests. Uh, one of the very articulate speakers earlier is from Cooper Kino speaking in behalf of the unity map. So I, I think that's such a clarified difference. The community map seems to be on the ground, grassroots, street by street, and the unity, which in my heart, I want the unity map to be the right thing. It's, I, I, all those special interest groups are important and their voice is important and their concerns are important. But when you look, I look at the map and I see they split the street of San Pedro. San Pedro Street is split out of the neighborhood I'm in. So San Pedro is connected over a river, over a highway, over a railroad track, over the airport um, um, free building zone to Rose Garden. And that's the middle of the street. That means neighbors who are 20 feet apart are in different districts. That seems absurd, and that can only happen in a non-grassroots organization. A special interest group, and I, it sounds like a bad term, special interest group, but I don't think it is necessarily, but in this case, there's a real disconnect between what their interests are and what the actual on-the-ground needs are. So I'm calling in support of the community map. Thank you. Ms. Rayan Mendoza followed by Elizabeth Harai. Ms. Rayan Mendoza. Oh yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah. All right, uh, yeah, give me one sec. So yeah, good evening. My name is Ray Mendoza. I'm a um, community member, uh, District 7. What I hear here is a lot of fear 
and this belief that the minorities are rising. And to me, that's amazing to witness something of this proportion. In a beautiful city of San Jose, yes, we're all together. But uh, let's not the, 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 the history, okay, repeat itself. A lot of uh, commissioners remember back in the day, okay, and you guys know what we're trying to do as a community, how we've been treated, okay? The Latinx, the indigenous, the blacks, the Asians, okay? And in my heart, I feel the equality is possible, okay? And, and, and the unity map shows this. I know it's a little different and everybody's scared of having different, but uh, I think different is good. It keeps people honest and straight, okay? And remember, every man, everybody, everybody has the right uh, of, of happiness. And I believe the, and, and the more especially the pursuit of happiness, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, I call upon you commissioners to remember how we were mistreated back in the day. And you guys have something important in your hands. You guys can change, okay? Send the unity map to the city council. And then we decide when it gets to the city council. This great city of San Jose is united. We we already united. We're just discussing what the future is going to be. Don't mistake that, okay? Because we community. Elizabeth Harai, followed by Julie. Good evening. My name is Elizabeth Rye, and I am a part of uh, the D9 Four Corners neighborhood. I'm currently on the board for Pinehurst Residents Association, and I do, I've come to several of these meetings in the last uh, two weeks, and I'm happy that um, our Four Corners uh, Thousand Oaks Neighborhood Association, Pinehurst Residents Association, and Erickson, Erickson Neighborhood Association and Tatra are well positioned to continue to stay together in D9. I am in favor of recommending that you recommend to the city council that the community map, community map is uh, uh, moved forward to the council, which was developed to meet the fundamental guidelines and laws dictating compactness can continue continuing preservation of communities of interest and outreach to affected communities. I'm opposed to the un unity map, which was created contra contrary to redistricting laws and best practices, especially in the way it breaks up communities of interest, as many people have said this evening. I believe uh, um, at what a previous commentator stated that we need to move forward and you are um, the stewards of this opportunity for us. Thank you very much for your time uh, and working through all of this. This has been a fascinating process as a um, community member and on the board of Pinehurst Residents Association to see all of the different uh, factions within San Jose. And thank you for working on this on behalf of our city. Good night. Julie, followed by Yuritza Martinez. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm for the community map. My name's Julie. I live in the Vendome neighborhood. Um, and I like what Wade said about the special interest groups and the grassroots groups. Um, Having the San, North San Pedro Street cut off from us in the Vendome neighborhood absolutely does not make sense. Um, anything that is happening around our neighborhood on North First Street, on Taylor Street, down more where Civic Center is, that street that actually goes into Civic Center where the county government building is, won't have any say so in anything that's related to where they live. So it absolutely doesn't make any sense. Um, and also like, like was said before, there's uh, highway 87, there's Guadalupe river park. Um, there's the Coleman Avenue where all the shopping is that, that the people that live on North San Pedro would have to go through in order to be uh, unified with 
the Rose Garden area, which it, I don't understand why that uh, separation was come about. Also, I too would like to see maps that have street names on them. It doesn't seem that um, the commissioners or whoever's creating these maps is being very transparent because I'm looking at them at home. I do not have a huge uh, 50 inch monitor where I can get into detail looking at these. I have a normal laptop. Um, it's, it just doesn't seem, you know, there there's, seems like there's something missing that we're not getting the full picture. We're not being told everything because the names of the streets are eliminated. Um, yes, it says 87 or North First Street or Taylor Street, but it doesn't have all the specific streets in there. Yuritza Martinez, followed by Adam G. Hi, my name is uh, Yuritza Martinez. I'm in support of the Unity Map. Um, I am opposed to the community map. I know a lot of people are saying they're in support of it because, you know, the special communities of interest or whatever, like, honestly, every community should be a community of interest. And like we said before, uh, the reason these communities are together is because they were put together in the first place. Um, and kind of every other colored community was just pushed to the side. Um, and so there's really, if you're just going to keep those lines only favoring the wealthier communities, and there's really no point of changing the lines, right? The point of changing the lines, the lines is to bring um, equality and the voice to vote um, to everyone. So if changing the lines, the way the community map has them, is going to keep um, all the wealthier communities with the you know, the bigger voice, then there's really no point of you guys making a change to the lines because you're not making a change in general. Um, so if you are going to make a change, make sure that the change brings voice and equality to the communities, all of the communities. I don't care who the communities are interest or whatever, because the only people that are communities of interest are the ones that were, you know, put on there by redlining. And so that's really like, if, if you don't take that into consideration, you're really kind of just turning your cheek the other way. So, you know, I appreciate your guys' work and I really hope you make an honest and um, right decision with doing this. It's not easy, um, but you guys know what the real outcome will be for the next 10 years. And so don't take that lightly. Thank you. Adam G, followed by Cher. Hi, I'm a resident of District 3 in the Vendome neighborhood. I joined the call to voice my support for the community map and also thank the creators for their efforts and their communication with the neighborhood. I believe the community map is, is more practical than the other proposed option and it keeps the downtown neighborhoods and emotions around downtown unified. Uh, the other map has a lot of buzzwords and a lot of emotions behind it, uh, enough to uh, fill the back of a Subaru up with bumper stickers, but I'd prefer to go with the practical side and go with the community map. Thank you. Cher, followed by Wolfram Schneider. Hi, um, yes, I'm in support of the community map. I think it should be sent forward to the council. And the fact that, that the uh, community map people were threatened with a lawsuit earlier in the meeting, I would like to respond to that and say, 14th Amendment, if race is a predominant factor or as a result of considering race, the districts are very oddly shaped, then the lines may be unconstitutional. If race is a predominant factor, it may be unconstitutional. The only thing the unity map people have ever talked about was race, okay? So if you want to talk about a lawsuit, it might be right there. The other thing I would like to mention is whoever's talking about gays and they're going to be in this district and that district, there are plenty of gays in District 3 downtown, they're not included over that to this preferred district for gays over in six. Okay, so why don't you bring them all in? The other thing is Vendome neighborhood, it is being cut off. It had so many concerns with downtown, with Japantown, with all the construction, with the DOT and all those things. Communities of interest, if you want to look at the Fair Map Acts, it maintain integrity of neighborhoods and local communities of interest. The, the unity map tears through District 2, District 10, District 6, District 3, without regard for anything. And by the way, District 6, they don't seem to have a problem with reducing the white population in District 6 by 7%. Apparently, nobody wants to highlight that. So um, I fully support the community map, with, especially with its current edits today, needs to be sent through to the 
to the um, council for consideration. And um, let me see if I have anything else. And this all in this community, in this unity map, I'll tell you that long arm down into district six and squeaking up by the airport, that is not part of redistricting guidelines, does not allow that stuff to happen, to just reach over because you want to grab something here and there. That is not legal. Thank you. Well, from Schneider, followed by Fred Landis. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. This is Wolfram Schneider. I'm a downtown resident. I live in uh, Paseo Plaza. Next to me is uh, Tower 88, the Grad, and uh, Park Townsend. You want to put us into uh, D6 with a unity map, and we you totally separate us from our neighbors in the university district. You separate us from Negley Park. You split us away from Sun uh, uh, Sofa district. And uh, this is the neighborhood we normally live in. This is the neighborhood which we have a strong bond with each other as neighbors from house to house, from homeowner association to homeowner association. And uh, in this case, it's really ridiculous if you want to split us apart like this. So the only way to go is really the community map to keep downtown intact and together and leave us in the neighborhood which we live in. We have nothing in common, you know, with the uh, D6 uh, district over at Almaden and Rose Garden. Thank you. Fred Landis followed by Joseph Cervantes. Fred. Landis. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, so I just wanna say the unity map does not unify. It divides and it divides by design. It gerrymanders by race and brings up all of this class warfare, which merely sets us back. That's not where San Jose is going. I'm a resident of, of a diverse district two, and we have had representation from virtually every race uh, through my 25 plus years here, and not through ger gerrymandering or edicts from big labors or any other group. So the question is, will we vote for more racial division of the past or the immersive culture of the future that we all know is happening. Previous caller mentioned the constitution prevents this division by race. And I highly suggest the commission take that under strong consideration. So please support the community map and say no to race-based unconstitutional measures. Thank you. Joseph Cervantes, followed by David Knoll. Hi, this is uh, Joe Cervantes. I'm uh, speaking in favor of the community map. Um, we hear a lot of the speakers in support of the unity map, um, and they say that they're for equality, fairness, against redlining and voter suppression. Um, the unity map you know, it's not a panacea. It's presented as a remedy for all difficulties, past, present, and future. And it's not. It's just, it's a, it's a power grab, as far as I can tell. The unity map is a work of a cadre of race-based organizations. And their, their methods and, you know, the end game is pretty clear. Um, if you look at what's the guidelines for redistricting, population balance, well, everybody is doing that. That's the purpose of this whole endeavor. Um, with everything else being secondary. Communities, in, communities of interest, that's a pretty vague idea. You know, if you go into a neighborhood, you can see like, oh yeah, this neighborhood is like that. That might be a community of interest. Uh, the Unity Map, they're cooking up all kinds of crazy ideas for uh, communities of interest or different ideas, let's put it that way. Um, compactness, well, they fail there, my God. If it's to be compact, the, the, the um, Districts would look round, you know, spherical or, or circular, not like dragons. Unity map, dragon map, not good. Boundary preservation, also a failure. Same reason. It's gerrymandered, dragon looking like crazy. So, uh, you know, the unity map, not good. It's not good. People look at the community map as good intentions behind it. Good people, you know, grassroots people trying to put something together that's not divisive. Go unit, go community map. 
David Knoll, followed by Jeremy Plunkett. I, I strongly urge the commission to support the community map and its extensive grassroots efforts to preserve communities of interest and keep districts compact, contiguous, manageable, and enabling all residents to have the best possible representation and constituent services. Practicality benefits everyone. Please don't allow District 2 to be wedged in between Districts 9 and 10 in the Almaden and Blossom Hill community of interest, which would create chaos in the planning and construction of urban, urban villages along Blossom Hill corridor between Almaden Expressway and Highway 85, which will help address the critical housing needs of all of our residents. The Hoffman Viamonte neighborhood has been very well represented by District 10 for at least the past 20 years, and it's unnecessary to move it to District 2. I expect all city council members, regardless of their ethnic demographics and gender orientation, to represent all of their constituents equally, regardless of their demographics and orientations. With our city's wide diversity, most people will be represented by council members with different skin colors and genders than themselves. We should embrace that, not consider it voter suppression or disenfranchisement. The real way to affect change is to roll up your sleeves, work with your council members and organize your neighbors to identify issues that affect you and identify and promote workable solutions. I don't believe that simply changing district boundaries will affect the changes that so many passionate speakers have been seeking. Thank you. Jeremy Plunkett, followed by Jeffrey Buchanan. Yes, hello, sorry. I, I know I already got to speak briefly this uh, evening and thanks for your time, I appreciate it. I, I had a few things I wanted to add to my earlier presentation. Uh, I don't mean to blame anyone. I wanna be clear that this is an issue that if anyone is to blame, it's the city for encouraging people to draw maps starting from a blank slate, which guarantees that the maximum number of voters will end up being disenfranchised. And I want to point out that uh, in the existing maps under consideration, not only are there significant numbers of voters moved from D3 to D6, but in particular, the unity map moves significant numbers of voters from D9 to D2 and D5 to D8. And all of those people, those whole neighborhoods, thousands of people are going to sort of wake up a polling day or when they go to send in their ballots in 2022 and be like, huh, why am I not voting for a city council member? I thought I was gonna be voting. And uh, it's really on you and, and the city council to to see if you can prevent that from happening, because I, I think some people at some point are going to really notice this and get worked up about it. Uh, it's a big issue of the day across the country right now, the integrity of our voting and uh, fairness of our voting. And I'd like to see San Jose be uh, taking a proactive stance on this and really be in the lead. Maybe it takes a change to the city charter, but much better that we go through the work of doing that than, than a lawsuit that just costs money. And the other issue I wanted to mention is it's been uh, considered recently to redistrict again in just a few years, maybe divide the city into 14 districts instead of 10. And if we allow that to go forward, there's the potential for people who were disenfranchised in this redistricting process to find themselves again with their voting pushed out another two years or another four years. And that would just get ridiculous. I think we all agree we don't want to see that happen and we need to fix the process sooner, not later. Thank you. Jeffrey Buchanan, followed by Roma Dawson. Uh, thank you, members of the commission. Uh, Jeffrey Buchanan here on behalf of uh, Silicon Valley Raising Action. Certainly appreciate the opportunity to present the updated unity map earlier and would encourage you uh, to send that map to city council. In fact, you know, I think all three maps that are under consideration currently by the commission uh, probably are all deserving of the city council considering. Um, more important than that, I just wanted to speak to some of the discussion tonight. Um, I think you've heard a lot of comments uh, from folks who have talking points uh, trying to question the motives of those who've worked on the unity map, the community members who've been engaged around this question and decided to spend their evenings uh, talking with you about why they think it's important. Um, it's one thing to question uh, what, 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 kinds of what kind of ideas people have. It's another thing to question the motives. And I think it's a really dangerous, slippery slope uh, you know, we have organizations who put this map together uh, who represent tens of thousands of residents in the city of San Jose. Uh, we've engaged with thousands of residents about the ideas behind this map to try to get additional input and, you know, have been working to iterate and to work on these maps. You know, I am not a special interest. You know, I'm, I'm a community resident like everyone here. I actually uh, 
volunteer and represent uh, my school board. I have students in District 6 who are District 6 residents who during the pandemic, you know, had family members who couldn't get a job, who couldn't collect unemployment, who needed food, who, who were worried about paying rent checks. You know, these are the very families that are not adequately represented in their current district. And we have a lot of claims of, of gerrymandering being thrown out, but let's, re let's look. We're looking at a set of changes to move and grow districts east to west. The other map, the community map, is growing north to south. These aren't gerrymandering. These are differences of opinion and differences of ways of drawing maps. And so there's a lot of kind of- Roma Dawson, followed by Eddie Coria. I clicked a lot of talk, but Roba's microphone is not showing up. So I'm gonna try that again. Okay, I'm gonna move on to Eddie Coria. Roma, something weird is happening with your um, with your Zoom. When I gave you permission, your mic didn't show up. Please check to make sure your mic is connected. Go ahead, Eddie. Um, thank you, commissioners. I would like to ask both community map, uh, the community, um, map presenters and the new maps to please layer uh, where current um, school districts are at because I see that uh, an example up here near the Penn Center Creek, um, pretty much all the schools are in D4 and um, Toyon used to be in D4 and it's now being um, included into D5. And uh, it kind of doesn't make sense to have um, communities who are one block away from a school be represented by um, be, be represented by, by a different district. And the same thing down with uh, um, Allen Rock and, and uh, Ocala. I think it, that uh, is also a very important community where we send our children to where we send our children to school and then when we uh, go ahead and draw lines that basically separate us, that, that's uh, kind of separating a community. So I encourage both maps to consider um, Marbury and uh, Toyon to be part of D4, um, District 4, because that's what it was and that's a natural um, line to continue to keep that community together. Thank you very much. Ed Berger. Yes, uh, thank you for the opportunity and thank you uh, commissioners for all your hard work. Uh, I'm with the Northside Neighborhood Association and uh, over the years, uh, our neighborhood association has interacted with the following uh, neighborhood associations close to us. Hensley, Japantown, Vindom, Hyde Park, San Jose Downtown Residents, Spartan Keys, Julian St. James, Nagley Park, Campus Community, Rosemary Gardens, Brookwood Terrace, Guadalupe, Washington, Madera Horning, uh, and others. And so what do we all have in common? We all have geography in common and that all of these neighborhoods surround the downtown core and we share similar issues, similar problems, and we need to come up with similar solutions. So uh, in my view, the community map represents the best opportunity for redistricting for San Jose. Um, I could also say that all of these neighborhoods and the north side in particular are very, very diverse neighborhoods, both racially, ethnically, culturally, and economically. And all we really care about is that we share this same geography and we need to uh, come upon and arrive at solutions that will benefit all of us who live close to each other. Thank you. Back to the chair. Thank you, Tony. Um, yeah, we before we go back to the commissioners, I wanted to just uh, ask the city attorney a question regarding the issue that was brought up by Mr. Plunkett um, and uh, whether or not 
you have an opinion on that issue or, or is that something that you'd have to come back on? Well, I'd like to look into a little further. And Mr. Plunkett was the gentleman who was speaking about a disenfranchisement with regard to staggered elections. Yeah, correct. Uh, yeah. So it, it, he correctly cited a Supreme Court decision from the state of California. I haven't looked at that fully, but it is common practice for um, uh, municipalities and jurisdictions that have uh, council districts to to stagger them. And uh, it is a reality of redistricting that as you move boundaries along, around to accommodate population growth, that uh, certain uh, voters will um, not uh, be electing uh, a representative in an upcoming election and have to wait six years, as he stated. Uh, but this is not something that, as I understood, is considered a disenfranchisement that is that is illegal. Um, it is a reality of, of the redistricting process. Okay, thank you. Uh, does anyone have any questions on that issue? Um, the other thing, I, uh, the other two items, I just wanted to ask Chris, uh, there's been a lot of talk about comparison maps or sort of uh, putting maps on top of each other. Is that something that's possible? or is it, is it too difficult from a technical standpoint? Um, I don't know where to start with that. Um, I guess there, is, there are ways to do it. Um, one, of the, one of the ways to compare is to use the HTML web maps, go back and forth. Um, we haven't developed a, a, a technology to allow for those to be um, superimposed on each other. Um, at this point, um, there are there are ways to do that. Um, it's just not something that we've created for the for the commission. Um, and at this late hour, I don't think something we could do by the seventeenth. Okay, um, that that's fair enough. I, I I understand. So then for for the and then the the, the last thing I wanted to ask about and again for you, Chris. Um, uh, for the maps that you that you are producing. Is it possible to include some more street names on, on those maps? Yeah, so the PDFs are there for overviews. Um, the web maps are there to zoom into street level and, and make comparisons. So that's the point of the web maps um, that we've provided with each of these variations. Um, if you wanted to have street line street names, you would probably need to develop a map that was maybe 30 or 40 feet by 30 or 40 feet to be able to get the entire city of San Jose and all of its streets um, on a map. So yeah. it's just not, it, it, you know, it, you always have to make choices with maps and we've um, focused on neighborhood lines and major, you know, freeways and major, major streets for the PDFs. And then the, the web maps were really designed for exactly that. So you can zoom all the way in to almost see where your house would be and zoom all the way out to see the whole, this whole map. So it, it gives you that granular ability to, um, to look at a map and make sure that the dividing line is right for your neighborhood or for your, your community. Okay. Uh, that, that was the only sort of points I wanted to make before we uh, tossed it back to the, uh, Commissioners here for discussion. Uh, Commissioner Sidbury. Hey, um, no, what I was going to uh, speak on was what you just stated, the street names and, and overlay. Um, I would like to see um, if it's possible to bring back up uh, District 7 to make sure that we, we're clear on um, Goodyear Mystic. Because I, I think uh, it was cons that was going to be moved out, or it was moved out of District 7. And uh, if, if Chris can do that real quickly. Yeah, I mean, the, the change. Uh, is Chris, I, I was just going to say, but right. before you do that, uh, I just wanted to go to Commissioner Fadham real quick to see if he okay. had questions on, uh, on those three items that I brought up. I do. Thank you. I think um, what I'm seeing is I think what the confusion was from hearing everybody saying about the street names and so forth is earlier on we had the web versions 
the link to the web versions of the maps uh, that were attached to the agenda. Though, and those weren't in the last couple of meetings. So I think what would help the public a lot, especially now that we're down to the three maps, is if the links to the web versions were attached for them to easily go to the agenda and click on that. And I think that would help the public a lot because they it's not easy to navigate and for them to find the web versions so they can zero in and actually see the street names. That is true. I think uh, that's an, a great suggestion. So perhaps um, I, I will work with Tony to make sure that the web links are in, included as well. Um, I, I think they, I thought they were, um, um, but um, no matter going forward, you will have the web web versions of whichever maps you move to the next to the seventeenth um, for the your final meeting. Okay, thank you. Um, and then I guess uh, if there aren't any more comments or questions on street names or overlays, overlaying maps or anything of that nature, we can go back to Ms. Uh, Commissioner uh, Sidbury's uh, request on uh, looking at uh, Goodyear Mastic again. Yeah, so this was one that one of the changes that were made that was made. Um, sorry, I may have been a little fast. Um, can everyone see the see the maptitude now? Yeah. Okay. So um, Commissioner Sidbury, um, we have moved districts in the current version of working version of D4. We moved this Goodyear Mastic back into District 7. Okay, so we were 3.28 percent. Okay. And again, right. to for, like reset everybody. Um, currently, this is not a legal map. District six is seven percent over or under. And District five is six point six nine percent over. Okay, and we moved Dove Hill back in the District Eight. I'm trying to see Dove Hill. I don't see it. Yeah, I got it. I see it now. Okay. Okay. So it is. Yes, got it. Okay, and you know what? You know, with the influx of of, of citizens in the various districts, your population is going to change. And I think someone spoke to that, uh, one of uh, uh, individuals that came on to make a comment that that's something that we really need to take into consideration is that we're going to have to somehow or another make some adjustments as to uh, how these uh, lines are going to be drawn. Because, you know, uh, with the increase of population in a lot of these districts, uh, to make things balance out, uh, you may have to break into some of these other districts to make it uh, feasible to um, give each person or each district an equal share. I know that Commissioner Martinez was concerned about the Latino vote uh, in District 5, I think it was. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. He, um, you know, we want to make sure that um, when we discuss these things about moving these lines, let's just make sure that uh, we also include in that conversation uh, the uh, breakdown of the populations, the various groups. So that's just my comment, and I thank you for bringing up Chris, District 7, again, to give me a clear picture because I'm taking notes as we speak. And one more thing. Uh, will this map, once we finish tonight, would it be available tomorrow on the website? I'll try to export it tonight. So and Okay. Do, and then she'll get it up, I'm sure, as fast as she can. Okay, thank you. So, uh, yeah, I just want to point out something that Chris just said that this map technically isn't legal right now so 
there, there, there we, we need to do some work on this map. <laughs> and um, I see that Commissioner Alvarez has her hand up. And so yeah. um, you have the floor, Commissioner Alvarez. Yeah, I'm, I was exactly going to say what you're saying. It's not a legal map, and that's my concern. That we have to address that issue, of what what it'll take to make it legal. Because I know our numbers in seven and five, they're still up there, and and four, all those numbers are up well, on the other side. District six and and nine are under. I was under. I'm not as under as they are. So we really need to address that issue. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. Uh... Dit Leveson. Yeah, thank you. Um, I mean, we've made some changes and that's fine, but I mean, the bottom line is to get the map into compliance, you have to bring, I think, part of D3 down into the keys area to gain population and take some away from seven to kind of equalize those out. And then six is probably going to have to grow into the Deer Dawn Station area, and hopefully that's enough population, basically using 87 as the natural boundary, um, up to maybe Julian, I think, or um, yeah, maybe up to West Julian, at least Santa Clara Street, but maybe up to West Julian, and that connects to Stockton, which is already the existing boundary. And maybe that gives you enough population to kind of balance it out. Um, but if you don't make that move or those moves, and you've got to kind of revert back to what we were talking about originally. It's, that's those are the three districts that have to work together, and there's only so many moves you can make in that in that basically that triangle, if you will. So do we go back? We shift things around and move Deardon back into six, um, which then it kind of splits some of the area, which might be more of a natural fit into three. So be it. I mean, six and three have been working together in that area for a long time. Or we can go back. I think the third option is to put Goodyear, Mastic, Guadalupe, Washington, and Gardner all into six and move three maybe down into seven. So, I mean, I, those are, I don't see many other plays besides those three to balance the population out amongst those three districts because six can't move west, six can't move south. So that's where the move has to happen. And, you know, any way we cut the cut the pie, if you will, there are going to be certain residents who maybe aren't don't find that to be optimal. Um, but we're trying to achieve the least amount of disruption possible while keeping neighborhoods together and not diluting their voice. And so I think one of those three moves are the, are the moves we should make. And again, I'd welcome the feedback from District Three and District Seven. But if we're going to move this thing forward, we kind of have to come to a consensus, make the move, and kind of move on, I think. Uh, just a clarifying question here. Uh, when you talk about moving um, the Deardon area back into District 6, are you including um, Delmas Park as well? or? or yeah, I think you have to for purposes of the population balance. Because of how imbalanced we are right now, you're going mm -hmm. to need to include those residential neighborhoods that are in that portion just west of 87. Yeah, right in there. You're gonna to have to include all of that into six in order to gain a meaningful population increase to rebalance between six, three and seven. That's the only move north that makes sense. Any further north and you're really breaking into really what is purely kind of downtown's zone of influence, if you will. And so that's kind of the area if you're going to move north. And if you're not going to move north, then you need to move District 6 slightly e east. And let me tell you something from personal experience. I, again, I live in the North Willow Glen, right on the other side of that train track in the Gardner neighborhood. I drive through Gardner. I cut over through the Guadalupe, Washington neighborhood and come in downtown to my office every mm -hmm. single day. There's a VTA stop. Those neighborhoods do share some commonalities. And the populations in there are changing a little bit, I guess, as some of the overflow from Willow Glen spills into those neighborhoods. So while it hasn't been a natural fit, I don't think if you keep them together, Goodyear, Mastic, Guadalupe, Washington, Gardner, North Willow Glen, there is some definitely some unity of interest that would respect those neighborhoods without 
splitting them into three districts. But again, if you want to keep them in their original districts in three and seven, you got to move north into Deerdon. That's the only move. Um, Commissioner Berrigan? I'd like to support uh, Andrew's theory there with the Delmas Park into Deerdon. We could have Chris explore that change. Sure. So would you want to move um, north to Santa, Santa Clara or, well, here, let me show you to Santa Clara and then we can go farther. Let's try uh, just south of Santa Clara Street for now. Yeah, I agree. So here's Santa Clara. Yep. Um, and the 87. Yeah. Um, and so this gets, let's get um, six to negative four um, point seven. So you'd still need, I think, to bring district like the district three and four three and five down um reduce it, their populations but this would get you you know part of the way there yeah i mean i think that move and then because you can rebalance a tiny bit of six with nine right i mean there are a couple of yeah, streets yeah. maybe on the southern border where you could unify cherry or you could pick up you know a yeah. percent right and maybe nine goes to two and a half and six right. comes yeah. down to three and a half that Money, yeah that. right so Money, somewhere can. along there i'm not suggesting anything specific right now but that would be an easier kind of move to make to rebalance the population if you will coupled with the deer don move and then we can leave the things that we've already done in in three and seven so i mean if that was is something that we could be explored then you know i would look for some input from nine as to where he think the ideal place to maybe pick up a couple of census tracts would be on that southern boundary yeah and i don't i think that would create a real problem because those are old neighborhoods that have of uh, communities of interest that have been together for a long time and that would create problems plus uh, nine's already negative. Uh, then we would become even more negative to have to, and then it would be like a domino effect instead of just trying to look at the overpopulated zones at this point. But I yeah, think I, I think the purpose though is to balance the underpopulation, right? That's what if we get it down to this number, it's about sharing the underpopulation, for lack of a better term in order to prevent the fracturing of what I've, what we've been told are areas that share a very strong unity of interest that may have even a more uniform ethnic background um, in the neighborhoods up in the corner we were just talking about between three, six and seven. So, I mean, that's, it's kind of a, well, if we can move a couple of streets or a couple of blocks here in order to prevent breaking up this whole group by maintaining the deviation and sharing some of the underpopulation, that may be the more sensible move. I'm not submitting that it, it is for sure, but that's, I think, something that would be easier than trying to do all these very weird moves that we were kind of exploring earlier and then going into the east side and taking Las Palma and doing all those things. So. Yeah, I would have to look at the streets, but my biggest concern is, again, then you're saying, okay, break up the neighborhoods of nine to keep the neighborhoods of three and five together, which makes no sense either. Well, so. what, no, what, what I'm suggesting is that the fact is that the original southern boundary between nine and six stretched further south than it is right now. I mean, there has been testimony that they, from the associations that border those two communities that, you know, they could take it down to Foxworthy. Right. So right now we're still north of that. So I think there may be a couple of census tracts that we could sensibly add consistent with community interest testimony that would not really disrupt the identity of those neighborhoods. But maybe I'm wrong. I just say if we could zoom in and maybe look at some of the streets, maybe a light bulb will go off. Yeah, I think we would have to look more maybe towards the Canoas Garden area. Rather than just going down directly south. Yeah, I mean, we could, you could certainly try to do that. You know, the, the only thing that I'm concerned about is that 
how much population you're going to take. If you want to keep that area together, you may not be able to make as small of moves, but you can certainly can certainly explore that too. Yeah, I, I understand the making the smaller moves. The problem is those streets that we're talking about would definitely then start fragmenting neighborhoods. That it, it, you, it may seem like, oh, we can take a couple streets here, but actually what you're doing then is breaking up neighbors by saying one block over, all of a sudden they're no longer in the same district when they've they've considered themselves a neighborhood for decades. I mean, Cherry, according to the current lines, is split. Right, this part of this is part of Cherry. Here. Right, and it's split along a um, kind of a natural line of the way it has gone yeah. over the years. Um, I think Andrew's right on. Um, it, it, what's the population there? I mean, this would make um, six under by two point two point three would make um, nine under by three point seven. Um, I think that's probably. I can. Tr There's not a lot of population ab above Cutner, Curtner. Sorry. Um, and try the, try that maybe. But um, this. Let me see if I can try to use this order. Yeah, that's too big. Okay, so I mean, I think, wow, that added, no, okay. So yeah, so this change would, would help balance a little bit, but it's still, I mean, we still would need to do work in um, the three, four, five range. Um, Cause this is still three point, no, this is the low mark at 3.8% under. And we, I think we have a, we have one district that's 6.6 .6 over. So again, that's too, too much. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think revisiting district five and district four would be, would be necessary. Uh, Commissioner Alvarez. Oh, you're on mute. I agree with uh, with the fact that we do have to look at the higher and higher density. As much as it's difficult to change those neighborhoods, like in District Five, six point six nine percent, and you've got District Four at six percent. I mean, that's a, and I know I totally understand the people arguing for the unity map that they don't want to dilute the voting capacity, but the reality is they're the districts that are heavenly populated, surrounded by districts who are underpopulated. So that is a very, it's a dilemma that we have to deal with. And I totally, totally understand that we are going to have to make some tough decisions that we're gonna to have to accept and take responsibility for. My concern with making additional changes to to, to this map is that we're just propagating issues. It, how, how do folks feel about just, I guess, backtracking from the changes we've made so far and go back to our D4 that we started with tonight? Yeah, I mean, I would, I would second that. I think, I think we, I think it was a better drawn map originally uh, while well-intentioned the changes I, I don't think that they're really yielding positive results I, I would agree with Andrew and it would put it back into compliance by making the changes we did tonight we took a map that was in compliance last meeting and now it's out of compliance I would agree that we go back to the original map uh, particularly 
you know, the, the changes here that are dropping that Latino plurality uh, in D5 are, are going to be a real problem we're going to hand to the city council if we leave it that way. So we need to really look hard at some of this discussion that we had because we're, we, you know, like we keep talking about little Portugal, but that's not a Portuguese population. That's a Latino population. It's a business zone up and down a street. But and so anyway, it's, I think uh, we, we really just need to go back to the original map and let um, Mr. Shafee take a look at the suggestions being made and really lay out the numbers because just a drop in the plurality in the east side is gonna be a real conflict. I mean, it's gonna be, an, it's gonna be a battle. <laughs> That's all I can say. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Sidbury, you had your hand up as well. Yes, I, I, I agree. Uh, um, bias going back to the original map we had last week, I was 1.24, I think. And here we are now, we 3.28 over. You know, um, it seems like we, we don't want to continue to go in a vicious circle, just continuing to make changes and then we're out of compliance. And the, the next week we're in applying compliance. You know, let's let's be consistent. And, um, you know, that, that's that's what I want. Let's just be consistent and stick with what we have until we, you know, um, I see no other, re, uh, no other way to do it. So, uh, oh. uh, C Commissioner Martinez, you have your hand up, is that? No. Oh, okay. Okay. Is there a, I mean, it was somewhat of a motion made, um, but uh, do you want to officially, uh, someone want to officially make an emotion on that one? Actually, that's what I was just about. That's what my hand was raised for. I would, oh, okay. <laughs> I would move that we uh, return to the original D4 map that we had concluded with at the last meeting. And then we have the unity in the community map. And if, Chris can then for our next meeting, somewhat we then look at those three maps to see if there's any way. We're not gonna be able to please everybody, unfortunately. I think Commissioner Alvarez was right. You have to be in compliance. But at this point, my motion would be that we return the D4 map to the original that was in compliance at the end of the last meeting. And then we uh, consider that along with community and the unity map going forward. I second that. And one um, point of clarification, that's community map 4.0, number 77136. Yes, that's my understanding. The yeah. one that they presented tonight. And then the, yeah. unity map, the new unity map that they presented tonight as well. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Can I, can I just make one, one comment before we vote on, on the motion? Um, so I just want to understand like the procedure here. We've got to the end of the road, I think, more or less. We're making, we're going back to the original D4. Maybe we'll make a few tweaks, maybe not, before the night's over. We have the community map. We have the unity map. I mean, are we at a place now where we can give instructions to the community map makers and the unity map makers to present their final version so that we can vote next week? I mean, there's been, there was basically very minimal changes made to both maps. Wasn't a lot of feedback given from the commission, none on the unity map, very little on the community map. I think we can get a final version and next meeting receive the rest of our testimony and let's let's vote and move this to the city council. I don't I don't see any reason to drag this out any further. I agree. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to get I, I totally understand where you're coming from, Commissioner. I just wanted to get clarification from uh from the city attorney's office. Um my understanding is that, and again, I this is just my understanding that um, um, that in order to give the public an ad, you know, adequate time period to review sort of final quote final maps that we're considering that I think we'd have to have those maps in place um, at least seven days before our our next meeting. 
than they do hours. That uh, I believe that requirement's been waived um, mm -hmm. because of the oh. uh, the short time period to complete redistricting. Uh, just so that the commission also knows that the council, once it gets the recommendations from from the redistricting commission, is going to have to host a number of public meetings themselves, at least three, before they can adopt the final maps. Okay, great. Thank you for that clarification. Very, yeah. very much appreciated. So, if I could just offer an amended motion to what Commissioner Fadum offered, I would I would amend and move that we instruct the, the map makers who we've selected to submit their final maps for consideration at our next public hearing, with the intention at that hearing to actually put those maps to a vote on which ones or all of them will advance to the City Council for final map drawing. And I would second that motion as amended. So just a point of clarification we would allow them to submit the maps I know. But, would, but would we allow them to to do presentations again on the maps i would suggest adopting the procedure that you suggested uh mr chair and limit and presentations to any changes that were made from this version as well as limit those presentations to no more than five minutes each mm -hmm. okay agreed Yes, so this, is Tony, this is Tony Tabor, City Clerk. Um, I would assume that we're going to limit map presentations to just those two, no new map presentations. Correct. Okay. So three. Well, the th well, I obviously let Mr. Chafee do right. his presentation. <laughs> one, one no, no, I, yeah, I just mean no. Yeah, no, I, I, no I'm just, yeah. I'm just kidding, Tony. Yeah. One other thing, um, if they could get me or provide the clerk um final like either a districtor link to their final map or a shape file for their final map um two days prior or i don't know some before the meeting not the day of i can have them ready so we if you wanted to we could make changes to that those final maps okay <laughs> well i think uh maybe <laughs> I think I heard, uh, I think it was Commissioner Alvarez mentioned something about 72 hours. How about 72 hours prior to mm -hmm. our next meeting? If somebody Second. wants to. I'll, move, I'll amend the motion further and add the 72 hours in advance. Please submit them to the city clerk for uploading by our consultant. And then that has to be okayed by the person who second I believe the original motion is that I, I agree. Okay. So clerk, I don't know if you can okay. restate the entire motion before we <laughs> vote on it. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> that would but be just, great. you know, my, my notes are not well written. Okay. But, uh, to return with the original D4 map that was approved at the last meeting, as well as the community and unity map as presented tonight. Um, at the next meeting, direct redistricting partners to bring those three maps forward again. Um, community map 4.077136. Um, and then the friendly amendment was to allow presentations from the unity map, community map people limited to five minutes and that they need to submit any changes to us 70 hours in advance so that we can get it um, mm -hmm. to a usable form. Right. Submit final map 72 hours in yes. advance. Final yes. maps. Okay. Yes. Final maps. I actually wrote the word final in there. <laughs> okay. 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 So, um, oh, Commissioner Wright, do you have a oh. question? Yes, yeah, uh, it may be a friendly amendment. Can we refer to the D4 map as the commission's map as yes. was mentioned earlier? Okay, thank you so yes, much. Yes, I was going to do that. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so D. Berrigan? Yes. Ramon Martinez? Yes. Andrew Ditlevson? Yes. Freddie Sidbury? Yes. Sylvia Alvarez? Yes. BJ Fatum? Yes. Lenka Wright? Yes. And Adina Cardenas? Yes. 
Fred Buzo. Yes. Thank you. And because this is a special meeting, we have no open forum. Right, we have no open forum, that's correct. So I, I don't know, um, and then we, we can, technically we can continue to do work if you'd like, or we can uh, adjourn at this point. Um, it looks like maybe we have, uh, uh, Mr. Chafee has uh, instructions on, on moving forward. And uh, we're certainly going to have to do a lot more work, uh, pri even prior to our next meeting, and in, in looking at the maps that are submitted. So, I mean, if if there aren't any objections, I would uh, I would adjourn the meeting. No objection. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Good night.